right. I think we're rolling now, Mace. Perfect. Hello, folks. Welcome to another episode of the Hicks from the Sticks podcast. What number is this, Do you know? Ooh, let me double check. I think it's 80, 85. 85. Okay. Let me double check, though. All right. Anyways. Getting up there, big numbers, but uh, yeah, close to 100. Should we almost do a giveaway at 100? Maybe Jeez, a little giveaway. We could, we'll talk about that later. I think, and if anyone's interested in maybe joining our little giveaway, let us know. Okay, yeah, it's so a little Sweet. shout out to all the little businesses out there in Alberta that want to get in on the giveaway. So, um, anyways, yeah, welcome to another, welcome to another episode. Um, we're halfway through january here and for all of you living in central alberta there's a very unfortunate thing that is going to happen yes yeah, for all very of the party matters so yeah. We're talking about right away. yeah so i thought we'd get the serious business kind of um over with right and start um if you're somebody who has gone to college or grew up kind of in this area for the past shit who knows like 50 years yeah there's there's this one bar that will will forever be in our out. hearts yes and that is billy bob long billy riders Bob's. whatever you want to call it um it's going to be the last weekend here coming up so actually by the time this episode comes out it'll be, it'll, done. It'll be already over um so i i mean i guess this is kind of bad timing because i was going to say do if anybody mo- do we have a moment of silence for all the yeah memories? let's do a quick moment of silence Won't be the same without wet tea on Wednesdays. <laughs> no, it won't be the same. It, it won't, won't be, be the same. same. And yeah. you know what? I haven't really been in that bar. I, I I'm not gonna say as much as I should have, but I definitely like I only have had maybe half dozen to ten times I've been in that bar. Maybe. Yeah, I would say about the same for me as but well. But it, it was always fun. Yes. I don't think I've ever yes. had a bad time. But it was always a good time. That's for yes. sure. And yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just when I'm drinking, I hate the doing a long commute. Yeah, so that's really why I wasn't always very fond on going there. Just because then you got to figure out a driver, somebody's got a DV, or mm-hmm. you know, then it just turns into a whole hassle. But um, and then you're driving like, home drunk and your head's spinning, and you're like, yeah, "Holy shit, what are we gonna like, get home?" Feel like you're gonna puke in your on your lap, but yeah, uh, but yeah, I know it's the last weekend here, so Dev and I are gonna be in there Friday. Obviously, this is gonna be coming out after that, but uh, if you do see us there, I hope uh, I hope we said we would have said hi to you, and uh, I'm kind of. We're we're gonna be there on the Friday. There Saturday's the very last um mm-hmm. day. Um it's gonna be a shit show, man. Yeah. So I was told by uh some friends of ours the other day, um, shout out Hannah and Emma. Anyways, they showed up there for wet tea. They got there roughly around what, ten thirty? Yeah. And it was already a lineup like around the around the building pretty much. Did you even get in? I don't know. I, I think oh. so. I think so. But apparently, like the second that they opened their doors, there was already a lineup of people waiting to get in. Holy! So it's going to be a shit show this weekend. It's probably not going to be enough room to move around to really even dance or do anything. So it's probably not going to really be that fun, much fun. But you know, just for nostalgia purposes, uh, we should probably go. So yes, that's we will be there. Do. Jace from JWT Hats will be joining us as well. Wow, yeah. he's the one that is getting us out there. So, <laughs> yeah, shout out to Jace. Yeah. So if you see him there, make sure to say hi as well. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, no thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. Right. Um, and now we're gonna have the issue of all of you red deer skids coming to the bars and olds. <laughs> oh boy, maybe <laughs> I don't think this is gonna be our podcast. Oh. No, okay. No, we'll keep it up. You know what? We're very inclusive here in Olds. If you're from Red Deer, and now that Billy Bob's are shut down, and if you want to come to Olds, I guess, yeah, come support these local businesses out here. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't even give a shit. I don't even go to the bars that much anymore. <laughs> you know, fucking do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. All right, don't man. listen to me. Don't mind me. All right, We're, Billy Bob's will forever be in our hearts. Um, but should yes. we get into the next little segment here? Sure, what's that? The Western world. Yes, this is Devin's favorite segment. Ah, I just decided. Quite my favorite segment. What is your favorite segment, Devin? You know what? I like the market update. It takes a lot of work, to be honest. A little bit extra than most segments, but I like it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's see if you put your thinking cap on today. All right. Okay, what do you think cow wood is? Cow wood? Cow wood. Love it. No. Bones? 
No. I don't know. No. I have to do with the guano. Guano? Like their balls? No. Do you know what, skin? Do you know what guano is? What's guano? Well, have you ever seen Ace Ventura Pet Detective? No. Okay. Well, they call like bat shit guano. Oh, so it's a shit. It's shit, but it has it's something to do with shit. I don't know. Is it like a coating? No, cow wood. Think about it. Cow wood. Think about the texture, the hardness. It's a constipated cow chip. No, no, no. It's a dried cow chip. Oh, correct. Oh, it's just, it's dried cow. Chip. Pretty much, yeah. Oh. yeah. What would they ever use that for? Cow wood? Yeah. I don't think they would use it for anything. It's just called cow wood. It's cow. Okay. Yeah, when it gets all dried I mean, out. Technically, you could burn it. You could. Yeah, you could. could. Burn it. Maybe that's what they did back in the days. Maybe. Do you have a second one for us today, Mace? Sure. Give me like two seconds here, though. All right. Let's get it. And while Mason's doing that, I'm going to give a quick shout out here. I'm just going to shout out our YouTube channel. Uh, feel free to subscribe and like our videos. Of course, you have what you're what you're watching right now, the episode, or what, if you're listening um, on any podcast platform. But also, we are doing once a week. We're doing a non kind of podcast episode, whether that be farming tours, uh, different vlogs, maybe some funny videos here and there. Um, we have a few ideas currently up the pipe, and we hope to have more in the future. So that's gonna be those come out on Wednesdays now in replacement of part two, since we're only doing one episode a week, which I hope you all like. We had a few good comments about that. Did we? Well, we had James. And then I think I had one other person talk about that too. Also, I'm like having trouble focusing right now because you've like one mustache hair that's like way longer than the rest. Oops. Sorry, I should screw. Let me, let me, let me, let me. <laughs> All right. Okay. What's the second word of the week? The second one here is a little dark, mm-hmm. a little menacing. So like, put uh, your, it's pretty sinister. So okay, okay, okay. Put your sinister hat on. All right. Looking up a limb. Pervert? No. Oh. Has to do with a tree. Looking up a limb. I don't know. Oh, oh. I don't want to say it. No, no. What, what I'm thinking. You said pervert. Like, like the punishment of someone getting hanged. No? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Oh, another expression. That is sinister. Another expression meaning hanged. So if you're looking up a limb, that means you probably have a rope around your neck and you're just dangling right now. Uh, so hopefully neither of us yeah, are ever a, looking a up a limb. Is it? Oh, looking up a limb. Hey, you know what? There was there was probably more bad than there was good in the Wild West. So. That is true. And I guess that was our regular form of time. All right. Well, thank you, Mace. All right. Moving on. All right. Well, thank you, Mason, again for the Western World Week. We appreciate yeah. it. No worries. So we're going to, we're also. 2023 is about all about for us doing new things, okay? New year, new me. Yeah, new year, new us. So we decided to switch it up a little bit. So we're actually going to hop right away into the interview here mm-hmm. with, well, it wasn't really an interview, self research. So, yeah, actually, we should do our preface as we always do. I don't know if we did it in the actual recording, but mm-hmm. um, we went up to Wayne, right? And we uh, stopped at Wyatt Glover's place and, uh, we did a little self research. He did a little research. We did a little research, and this one's on the uh, the history of cattle. Um, I'm gonna be completely honest here. Like, I got pretty drunk before we even started recording. We didn't start recording until like 12:30. You know, and I think I was already like six like craft beers deep. Yeah, a couple six percenters. Yeah, there. I was listening to the recording earlier today, and I was like, "Holy fuck, man!" I was <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna go through there, and we're probably gonna have to cut quite a bit of stuff out. Yeah, this is the cleaned up. Yeah, so you guys will be listening to the the relatively cleaned up version, but it's about the history of cattle. Um, we talk about it a little bit generically, and then we dive into a couple of breeds a little more. Um, a couple extra details about certain breeds. Yeah, not necessarily the history of the breeds, but characteristics and maybe a little bit of advantage on the breed mm-hmm. um but the big thing to preface of course with self-research is we're not experts if you are a history of cattle expert and you realize some of our information is wrong take it up with our sources on google because <laughs> yeah and that's take where everything it came from. with the grain of salt yes of we're yes. just here to try and spread facts mm-hmm. on the internet. yes hopefully they're facts so should we hop in maybe 
yeah, that's up in here. All right, guys, welcome to another interview with the Hicks from the Six podcast. We have another fan favorite, fan probably favorite, the fanest favorite, fan favorite. Probably going on here. We got Wyatt Glover here. How do you know? Howdy, howdy. Thank you. Howdy. Second howdy. time on the podcast. First reoccurring guest. So I yeah, appreciate it. Back. Thank you. Thank yes. you for having me back. We're happy to have you back, Wyatt. Thank um, you. We're up here in Wainwright right now. We're just taking in all the sights. The big um, town. Big town of Wainwright. You know, beautiful Wainwright. I will say that. It's I nice. like to say the beautiful town of Olds. I think that it, that it applies to Wainwright as well. I think uh, Wainwright to Olds is like the ugly stepsister. To Olds? To Olds. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying Olds is like the Cinderella. It's then. a Cinderella. Yeah. It's that cute blonde chick, and then like Wainwright's like the brunette. That's a little bit. A little bit. I got a tummy, bro. That's, <laughs> so what you're saying is Olds is the girl that Devin wants to fuck, and Wainwright is the girl that Devin is able to fuck. <laughs> Sure. Gonna slay a few dragons for you. Gotta make do what you can there, Dev. That's right. Yeah, someday. Someday. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. Gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, well. So, Wyatt, if I re- recall from our last uh, episode, you had a pretty good drinking story. You had a couple good ones. Okay, so before you get into that, I'm just gonna say this. So, the last time we interviewed you, I forget what we were doing afterwards, but from what I recall. All right, y'all. Uh, just quick intermission slash stoppage here. Uh, this is Future Us post-interview. Uh, we're kind of just looking at it right now, listening to it. And we realize there's a few parts where it gets really muffled and stuff like that. Um, we apologize. We'll fix it in the future. But we hope you guys still enjoy this interview with Wyatt. Hey, Mace. Yep. All right. Let's continue on. Like, we started to get pretty sauced towards the end. Like, I remember I did it. Oh, was, yeah. Towards yeah. yeah. the end of our interview, like, just shit was coming out. Like, it, it got it worse. Stories were coming out. It was getting good. Yeah. But uh, because of that, the people obviously want some more drinking stories. They want they want some more stories. And everybody remembers the boop. The... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the infamous boop. Oh, oh, remembers that he loves that story. And we yeah. know that there's there's some more in the old noggin of what or you know why. So yeah, we just we just get chatting. I it'll come to me. It'll okay. just get it'll just get in there. Okay, so moving on here. Um, so I remember, and this was many months ago now because we it was last March. It was right before the well, sale. So yeah, we well, and we were supposed to do the second interview a while ago. But oh, yeah, I remember several months ago, I saw an article in the news, and it was um, some chick at a Blues Jays game, and there she was getting like fucked in the stands. <laughs> see this? <laughs> yeah, see this. Okay. See that so I wanted to raise the question: What are the most legendary places to do the dirty? Are you able to? The Lacombe City Center. <laughs> number three it's the movie theater okay right. like in so is this an outdoor or indoor no, it's indoor, yeah. indoor okay. yeah yeah we're we talking like packed house or are we talking about no okay so i think there's only like me and the girl and maybe a couple people at the front so yeah, we're talking uh, like quiet. world scale here this is one of the most legendary places you could do it oh, world scale this is the legendary place i did it <laughs> No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, legend. I don't know. It'd be cool. Like, in front of the Leaning Tower of Pizza. I mean, like, oh, like, oh, like, and then you could, like, pretend that you're. Did you say oh, Leaning Tower of oh, Pizza? Yeah. And then you have her with Pizza or fucking spell. Yeah, 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 angles. Yeah. Like, I think. Over angles, you know. You it, would, it would be so interesting to see yeah. on a photo. So, mine was going to be pretty basic, but I think it's, it's, it's very prevalent as well. Is. The Mile High Club, man. That's true. If you go to the Mile High, Mile High Club, like that's something that you could almost put on your resume. And if you're applying for a job, you can say, "Man, I fucked at a thousand feet." Like I was part of that. You kind of gotta hire me. That's right. You were there. I'm here. No, I haven't. I haven't been there yet. <laughs> no. No. Or, like that's a legendary place. That is a cool. Yeah. 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 Like that's 
if you're gonna fuck somewhere, that's a good place to fuck. All right, I got one. Wouldn't it be even more legendary if you kind of got up to the top of the water tower before? Okay. Especially now that they redid that building and they yeah. have really better security around there. Yeah, like, yeah. Or just any water tower. Well, there. especially since yeah. it's lit up now too, because before there it wasn't was lights. It was in, in the dark. dark. So if you got up to the top, like nobody's gonna know what the hell you're doing. No. But now it's all lit up. You're you're kind of on full display for everybody to see what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had the uh, last party at the duplexes before COVID hit. I don't know if you guys were there or not. It was packed, and then like anyway, Ben Marshall was all hot and horny to climb up to the top. And like we could, but the getting down part I think is the most this well, sketchy, sketchy. Well, the sketchy and part. From what I recall as well, didn't they have a bit of like a gap between where? The ground was and the ladder stuff. Yeah, because that's why they I didn't want need, people climbing. You need so, a couple people to get you yeah, so, up there. So did you guys have like a certain plan of attack where you guys maybe brought a ladder or something to meet up where the bottom of the yeah, ladder I think, started? No, we didn't have no plan. I think it was just kind of get there and see what we and could figure, figure out. Figure yeah. out from there. Like we we also planned on stealing a college way sign. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> I was having this conversation with somebody earlier today. I forget who. I think it was John actually. Um, he was telling me about how there was there's been so many people who've stolen the college way sign in Olds that I don't know if it's the town or the college, but they have special bolts on those signs. Oh, I, can, I can imagine that don't don't mix up to any regular kind of socket or anything that you could get at a store. Yeah. Just to stop from people's just to stop people from stealing it. Like they've gotten some like custom bolt pattern or whatever to stop it. Just because like you're saying, like you're going to steal the college. Really <laughs> yeah. time. Like so many people have had that thought throughout the years that they've, yep. they've done this to try to stop it. So, the, so let me, con- sorry, continue your story. No, I just went, 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 went from the bottom and it was, we couldn't figure, we couldn't find a socket big enough to fit it. So, that would make sense that they yeah. made some custom to where we can do fuck all with it. So, did you ever steal any sign at any point? I mean, I, mean, I know it's a criminal offense, and we we're not trying to, you know, incriminate you. incriminate you. But did you ever steal a sign? I did. I've stolen a sign. <laughs> sign. I can't tell you what kind of sign, but I'm not gonna tell you because yeah, yeah it was, it's bad. Yeah, yeah. It was not. It was, it was not good. multiple in one night. So yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna try to incriminate myself. <laughs> So, what's the statute of limitations on that? Isn't it like ten years on the sign? I think if you see it, any criminal offense, I I think it's ten years, and then you can legally talk about it without getting. Is that what it is? I know. I'm not sure. I'm not up to date on my I'm sure we'll get you on again at some point throughout this podcast. But I tell you what, we'll wait ten years and then we'll talk. About That's right. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll we'll confess it. to all of our crimes when we reach <laughs> <college>. <laughs> Whole episode right there. Yeah, yeah, no shit. All right, are we gonna do question number three here? Are we gonna leave. Let's do it. I think we should do it. All right. Are so we asked it? the best places to do the dirty. Yeah. Right now, now. Wait, do you have any other? Do you have any other? The porta potty at the <laughs> Innisfail or Pinocchio? Innisfail. Pinocchio would be pretty cool. Okay. There's a lot of cops at Pinocchio. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Which make the. The riskier it is, the harder it is. So technically, it ups up. But there's so many people walking, like to get to campers and all that. I don't know. Like some drunk guy probably walking. In okay, there. so I got a question for you guys. Do you think that sex in space would feel good, or do you think it would just be weird? I think it'd be weird. There's no gravity. Well, yeah. Exactly. Like once yeah. you once you're done, once you shoot your shot. Even just like, shoot yeah. shot. Every you like collect it, you just wow. like a bet, and just like collect it up. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm trying to like I'm not trying to think about dad, but you think about this guy right here. He's six five. He's like two hundred and something pounds. If he like thrusts into something, obviously there's no gravity or anything, and it's gonna push him away. So he's gonna like one thrust, and then he's gonna be twenty feet away from whatever he's. You know, whatever fucking muffin or whatever he's fucking. <laughs> 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 oh, God. All those nerds and what if, definitely ain't fucking dead. What if you, smart enough. What if you shoot it and you can't collect it and it's just like coming at you? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're a block. 
<laughs> I think you gotta do something with it. Yeah, you probably All right. Yeah. Back to the That's original funny. question. So we asked <laughs> Mars, <laughs> to the Hey, we got hey, you haven't asked if we all put a legendary place to do the duty. Hey, Great Wall of China. <laughs> yeah, you're you're going to jail. jail. You will, but it'd be pretty legendary. The Chinese government will just catch you. Yeah, you will be in some North Korean. You could camp. probably list stuff off like all day long. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So now we asked about the best place to do the dirty, which is one of the two dirties in your daily life, right? The yeah. second one's taking a shit. So what's the worst mm-hmm. place to shit yourself? It's a good one. It's a tough one. It's a, come on, the worst place to shit myself. So obviously we all grew, uh, other than Devin, we all grew up in kind of like rural settings. Yeah. So we didn't really have to face the situation that much. But like, just imagine you're on like public transit in the city. Shit your pants on a bus or something like that. Yikes. That's, or no, no. I got one better. We talked about the Mile High Club. Shit in your pants on a plane. It's actually going to Because you're in, you're in recycled air the whole time. Yeah. Oh, I would just recycle through. Well, and you're in an enclosed area, like. That's a tough spot. To it would be so fucking nasty. Oh, dude. Especially so if it was like a real raunchy one. Like, I mean, like most shits is, are going to be raunch. But if you stopped like, like at the old Mexican buffet before you got on the oh, plane. Dude. <laughs> you saw the shit and you just couldn't get there. Mm-hmm. And there's corn and <laughs> so, so. A shit working through your uh, digestive system. Yeah, you know, especially if you have like a ten hour from like here to Europe or something. Yeah, God, I couldn't imagine. Yeah, that one would be bad. Yeah, um, tough. I think any public transit would be really bad. I think, yeah, I think those are the worst. Those are the worst. Shit in your pants. Oh, you know it's my god. Every time though, like, oh, I know I shouldn't eat it, but I do, and then I just hurt so bad after. Is movie theater popcorn. That Amen. Just, Amen. Extra butter? Yeah. Extra butter. It's, it's it, just, extra butter. it just hurts my guts. So really? I don't know if it's the clarified or what like, is it clarified or something like that? No, no, it's that. Oh, it's not that butter. I always find the butter. Just yeah. Good. If like, I don't, butter? if I don't put butter on it, it's fine. But if I like, yeah, I'll give yeah, it a try. Yeah, yeah. It's not real God, butter. my guts hurt. So I don't have yeah. a problem with movie theater popcorn, but I will be honest. Like, I don't eat McDonald's that much. Every now and then you get the craving for McDonald's, yeah. right? What I found though is every time I go and get McDonald's, it just tastes like shit, and it fucking hurts my stomach. Yeah, like super That's bad. Fair. I think in college because we were eating it all the time, it wasn't too bad. Yeah, I'm the same now. Like saving money, yeah. and trying not to eat out very much, and if I do, it just hurts. Yeah, mm-hmm. like I find if I'm gonna like if I'm in in the field for work, and if I need the if I need some fast food, I'll try to get Timmy's. But if if I'm feeling a little greasy or something one day, yeah. And granted, that town has a Wendy's. I will always go to a Wendy's for burgers. Like they're just the best. They're the best. They're the top notch. Yeah. I'd say it goes Wendy's, then probably A and W, for quality. Yeah. Yeah, and taste. Yeah. Yeah, and taste. Hey. Minus then, yeah. without putting in A and W's marketing, of course. Yeah, uh, making the marketing strategy now. isn't great. Isn't yeah. great, I but mean, the that makes it actually it's pretty, it's pretty good. good. Yeah. The marketing I know, strategy. I, know I might stir up a little pot here by putting A and W number two. However, yeah, we don't condone A and W's marketing strategy. Okay, so the no. marketing no. Ma- no. the no. marketing strategy <laughs> makes you cringe, but at the, at the end of the day. Got some pretty good fucking food. They do. Like, let's be real. It's ten times better than be John's. Real. Like before, Devin and I left for Wainwright. We literally stopped at the A and W and Olds and. Oh, let me tell you a story. Yeah, I got a matzo burger and I completely fucked over Devin's burger. <laughs> let me tell you a story. Right? Stop the act, right? So they get less wrap. Yeah. And they wrap it in lettuce and then they put a, like a paper foil around it just to like tie it up real good. Yeah. And then they stick it in the burger wrapper. Yeah, this dude grabs it by the foil that has on the bottom and my burgers all over the bay. Well, <laughs> I'm picking this burger up, like eat it by like the patty, my two fingers, and maybe a piece of lettuce. And then at the end, he's like, We're about to go grab a fries. He's like, You want to finish this? And pulls out a full leaf of lettuce. It's like, Here you go. <laughs> okay, so. Fuck, Devin. 
I fucked them big time. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. to be honest, now I got like these jeans were like two days old. Now they're going to be in the wash uh, this weekend. Yeah, to be honest, I don't it feel... could last me a week, but no. Nope. <laughs> 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 That's the worst. Uh, Fresh pair of jeans and just get dirty in the first hour. If I'm being like, honest, though, I start doing I, smart things. I started taking old jeans, and if like so, okay, say for example, I was going to Tall Timber Calico to work there for a weekend. Yeah, I take my old jeans that were dirty earlier in the week, and I put them up on my bathroom door. Oh, smart! Remember them? Oh, yeah. And I use them at the ranch instead. The new ones I started on Thursday, so the Thursday ones are still good for Monday at work. That's smart. Thinking, thinking, devil. Always thinking. Brain, That's on yeah. five years old. It's called just for yeah, exactly. Yeah. Always thinking. Okay. I'm I'm thinking. Always thinking. I'm I'm thinking. Always thinking. That's what happens it's when you get a PhD. <laughs> <or college. laughs> he's just he's a smart guy over here. Smart yeah. Yeah. That's good. Speaking of smart, smart, smart guy, but he can't <laughs> eat bread. <laughs> Your brother said everything in the fucking periodic table of elements, but hey, he can't eat gluten. <laughs> oh, Devin, poor right. guy. All right, Mason, the last before question? we get into the oh, actual cattle smoke. stuff here, Ooh. should we right. ask him? We, 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 this yeah. is a question from 2022 that we asked a lot of people, and yeah, we still couldn't okay. quite figure out. Okay. No, we on. have figured this out, Devin. We have figured this out. Yeah, but out. you started. Let's let's preface what happened in December with Mason. Mason found his love for Zinn. Devin did too. Zin. I don't know why he's pinning this on me. Okay, so it's we're Nick here in Arizona. Yeah, so mm-hmm. the list naked team oh, shaving yeah. or, uh, yeah. add on a pod. It's those little white pouches that you throw in your gum. Okay, it's fucking tasty. We we, we got winter wintergreen flavored. Um. My parents listen to all these podcasts. They're going to hear. It's it. awesome. Please don't give me a hard time. I know you're probably going to text me or call me, but please don't give me a hard time. I'm a grown Mr. Boy. and Mrs. Mueller. He's 22 years old. Yeah, I'm, I'm a grown boy. I can figure it out. Yeah. But this is the question. We asked multiple of our guests uh, last year about this. Um, we've stated this is the last time we're going to ask it. This probably probably true. This one. It'll probably come up again at some point. But That'll happen. What's worse, dip or smoke? I think they're both equal and great. Yeah, oh, I agree. I don't know. A nice cigarette, like, I think dips worse. I get such a head rush every time I do it. So it's just so annoying at all costs. Dude, that shit fucks you up. Man. Yeah, whereas, like, um, a, a smoke, I can just have a quick one while drinking, and I just feel good, and then I can be good for two months and not ever do it again. See, the problem with chewing is you got to be careful because, like... It's if you're careful about it, it's okay. But like, if you accidentally swallow any of that tobacco, oh, dude, it com- it's coming out of both. I had been playing hockey at the job for VR, and my buddy, I don't know how old we're, grade nine or grade eight or something like that, and he he got some from the high school kids, and so we we were playing shinny, and he's like, here, have a dip. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I put it in. I put it in, and, and so we were playing hockey and skating and doing all that. And so I thought I was like doing a consistent job of spitting it out and like not you you intelligence. And I was, and then I got home and I was like, oh, I felt like shit. I had a head rush. I had to run to the toilet so I could puke out the rest that was in my gut. Yeah. Same thing. I had to shit out of that summer. <laughs> oh god! I did it a couple of times, and ever since I was fucking quit. Um, I hate it. Hey, it's just too much. Maybe pouches like wouldn't be too bad. But pouches are nice. I feel like I put, they are. I like I, pouches are quite nice. Yeah, zins are nice. We ran out though. So, yeah, it's kind of in a predicament. Right. Back but this week. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of got a funny story about chewing as well. Like we, uh, we were at a bachelor party this past summer. Oh, we can't embarrass um, them all. The we we won't name any names here because, we're, and we won't even name whose bachelor party it was. But we were at a bachelor party, and um, there was this guy there, awesome dude, sick as fuck. Okay, like he was he was awesome to hang out with, but he uh, he was more. Believe it or not, this guy was he was more into like smoking pipes. Oh, and he man, wasn't he was and he wasn't 80 years old, believe it or not. He was like 30 something. <laughs> he was really big in the pipe and like tobacco and you know, smoking yeah. it the old school way. But we were at this bachelor party. Obviously, Devin was there and he had his tobacco, his chew. 
Yeah. Right, so yeah, I was like, you know, I'll and this you. guy, you know, he was like, oh yeah, you know, I've I've had my chew a time or two. Give it me there, give it to me there, Comes young boss. The right? biggest pinch yeah. I've ever seen. Takes <laughs> a big old pinch, like, big ass pinch, like some southern shit. Sham, you grab, you know, just fucking throws it in his lip. Right, you just fucking pack it in his lip. Oh my lord! We're shooting the shit there for a bit. He's talking about his thumb because he had fucked it up in some Being accident and he was spitting it out spitting it out we were still talking accidentally swallows one looks at us he's like whoop uh-oh <laughs> <laughs> that was a mistake <laughs> about 10 minutes later we were inside the house we were on the balcony at the house and this is probably about i don't know 30 feet up from where the ground is this guy's so fucked up he was leaning on the railing <laughs> <laughs> Flexing, like it snapped, and we had to like pull him off. We like, like settle down there, buddy, and like you know get off the railing there. And like he was just out of his mind, and it was all from swallowing dip. Like one time, you just like and he he packed it hard. So like, he's pretty fucked up too. But like the dip just sent him. Yeah, it just sends you up here, and then he went over the cliff. Exactly, it does. It gets you. The funny thing is though, like we we didn't let him just just sleep yeah we had we had a, a bus taking us from from the place out of town that we were at into the the rodeo that was going on in town and we fucking took him with like we were all fucking around like we were having like a karaoke challenge while we were driving into town and he was fucking every five minutes he was throwing his head out of the window like the it was funny because the windows Gross. classics bus were like there was no window except for the, like the last quarter of the wall yeah. so all you could see is him go up and just his head as much as you get outside and puke just fucking drip so i guarantee you got a bunch of puke on the side and it was funny because then we even got in town we were at this rodeo event you know we were watching chuck wagons and so on and so forth and the entire time we were sitting in the stands like every there was a couple times throughout this where he would just put his head down in between his legs, and we were sitting in a fucking like front row. We were sitting in front row. And it's just this whole grandstand just full of people and just puking in between his legs. Like this dip just got the best of it. Like, hey, come on. But you know, after a couple times of him doing that, it, he he kind of got over you it. Got sober and, up and, then, there. and then it was good. But yeah. like, dude, dip fucks you up, man. And then if you have a Siggy and man a dip. God, that fucks you up. Yeah. Really bad. Like, we were at a baseball party and it was a lucky place quite a while ago. And I thought it was real cool. I took someone's sig, smoked the rest of it, and someone's like, here, you want a dip? I was like, yep. Why not? Why not? Took the dip. What are you talking about? I'm a man. Of course I do. Yeah, I'm on grade 10. So, and I, uh, and while I was done, I passed out beside Buddy's car, had to go find my truck, and then we went. We went on donuts with my truck. I don't even know who the fuck was driving. It wasn't me. I was in the back, puking off the side. <laughs> I, went to, I went to bed, and I was, it was like 10.30. I was, I was done. I'm like, fuck this. And I woke up. Someone's like, why? Well, I'm going to fuck your truck. I was like, what? So they swerved their dick out and started fucking the tailpipe. Well, did you have a pretty big exhaust pipe? Or was it, oh, pretty, it, tight? Was it was pretty tight? I don't know. Ooh. I don't know. They enjoyed it though. No, dip's a killer, man. I will say though, it this is it. like the nice thing about it is it's all in a pouch. It's tobaccoless, so it's a lot cleaner than chew. Yeah. And the highest you can get is six nicotine, so it's not the world. Yeah. If mom, when you're listening to this, I'm sorry, it's enjoyable. Free ad. One finger up. Yeah. Zen, if you feel like sponsors sending us some up to Canada. Yeah. yeah. So. Feel free. Yeah, please and thank you. We would appreciate it. We'll give some to Wyatt here as well. I'll give her a try. I'm sure. I don't know if his fiance would appreciate it. Sorry, folks. I'm not engaged, but I'm <laughs> the live in. I'm the live in. <laughs> All right. Hey, Wyatt, quick question here. What is your number? Okay. You know about the live tour? Oh, yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. What is yeah. your number to play in the Live Tour? For the people who don't know, the Live Tour is a golf uh, corporation that was created by Saudi so Arabia. Um, so, obviously, who knows where the money's coming from to fund this? Um, a lot of speculation going on. Um, but, <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. controversy as well. 
but uh, there's been a lot of top golfers who have been going and playing it because obviously the Saudis have been, um, you know, they've been proposing a lot of money. So why? If the Saudis approached you and said, hey, you know, we heard you on Hicks from the Sticks podcast. You know, you're a pretty funny guy. <laughs> so you come play on the live tour. Doesn't matter how you perform. We're going to pay you a salary. Yeah. This is what your signing bonus is going to be, though. We'll discuss the salary later. Yeah. What would your signing bonus be? I'd take a Chris $5 million, I think. That's it, eh? That's yeah. It. I don't know. I'm I'm hoping like if I got on the tour and then I was shit, but people still thought I was funny and I could get on a few Adam Sandler movies yeah, and yeah. make some money. Happy out. Gilbert too. Like, yeah, yeah. Like fuck around and and make my money elsewhere. I'm okay. not getting money from Saudi Arabia. So. Okay. I. You know what? And five million could take you a long way. Hey. I mean, like in if i'm pretty sure the live tour they go all around i don't think it's just in saudi like you do i'm pretty sure they had events in the states as well so did you know about the big controversy i don't know how much we want to get him to live tour but i was giving a quick well i've heard about it no for clue you guys are talking about yes you've like, never heard about this no no i haven't Dude, the liberals, the democrats fucking hate the live tour well so because they're playing in america i think they're playing they only had i think one or two events in america it's more than that I'm pretty sure. Love tour? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. They had one in Boston, and everybody, yeah. all the Boston, they're like, hey, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I know. Say because they're from Boston. <laughs> I know. I, whatever they have, say six events. I think four of them were playing on Trump courses. Oh. So that was that was getting some big. When we, we went uh-huh. to Winnipeg this summer, and uh, my family, some of them are Democrats and liberals. Whatever. They can do whatever they want. I really don't yeah. care. But. The one thing we couldn't talk about was golf. I'm not that involved with the whole golf shit. I, I know some some of the players. Um, yep. I know there was a couple of the top guys who took these huge payouts to go play. I think like Mickelson. And yeah. And didn't, about him. didn't he take like hundred million? Yeah, or he took. Like that? Mickelson's bad because he. Um, he gambles a lot, so they say. Mm. Reports say they gamble a lot. So I mean, the people said the same thing about Michael Jordan, though. They said the reason he quit is to get on the, these gambling ag- a- a- allegations. What a conspiracy, though, eh? Like that he didn't play in '95 because um, everyone said he took a break to go play baseball. But the conspiracy is that uh, the NBA suspended him for gambling. Dude, people just make wow, up this wow. shit, and but. But it makes sense. The funniest thing, yeah, you you watch the last dance, it makes sense. The funniest thing is people make up random shit, but at the end of the day, it makes sense. So, like, when I was talking to you earlier about that one uh, podcast I listened to that was all about conspiracy theories, like, they get into the most random shit, and it's just, it's, like, stuff that's so unbelievable, but at the end of the day, when you release the facts, it kind of is believable. It kind of of makes sense. You're like, shit. No doubt. I could kind of see this actually being a possibility, but uh, yeah, but yeah. So before we get into the meats and potatoes of this, I just want to say this is actually our first uh, kind of interview or episode of 2023. Um, so thank you for listening, everybody. This is the new year, new year, new us, right? That's right. We all got new goals um, that we're probably not going to achieve, and uh, it's 2023. So you know, say it out. out. Same year, different shit. That's right. No, same shit, different year. Same shit, new pal. That's right. That's how it goes. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, but and we haven't even discussed yet what the uh what this is gonna be about. Um we Wait, decided... so you need to give the quick preface though, but what's yeah, happening? I'll give the quick preface here. So everybody, this is a self-research. Um, take everything you hear here with a grain of salt. Always it <laughs> may not be factual. <laughs> Who fucking knows? You know, our sources. Who fucking knows? But this is uh, this episode is going to be about the history of cattle. Yeah, uh, we're talking about the history of cows here. Um, so a couple select breeds as well. Yeah, we're picking a couple select breeds, but we're just kind of dive into where cattle came from. I mean, we're uh, hicks from the sticks here. We talk about farming and agriculture and ranching and rodeo. So we figured it's uh, about time we kind of dipped into cattle. And who better to talk about it 
then our Good old pure red Charlay friend here, Wyatt. So, uh, so yeah, what do you figure, Dev? Should we uh, dive into this here? Yeah, all right. Yeah, so take we got it a over, few man. sections here. Uh, well, of course, before we get into the actual specific breeds, we have the beginnings. Like, where did Cal come from? Why? Where do you think dun, Cal dun, came dun. from? Well, I'm thinking England, but I'm thinking like intercontinental Europe. Not even. What does that mean? What's that? What was that? Does that mean like Germany? Yeah, like Germany, Switzerland, all them. So, okay, so Devin, so, so I, I, are you going to let me guess? Yeah. <laughs> Get the sheet. We did this research probably like four months ago. Oh, so we're fast. These assholes cancel on me. Yeah, I don't remember jack shit about this. If I was to make a random guess about where cow came from, let's say China. Not even close. <laughs> it's right in between. So technically a genetic study <laughs> of cattle has claimed that all modern, modern domestic bovines are descended from a single herd of wild ox that lived 10,500 years ago. And they found they came from the Middle East slash Turkey. Turkey, okay. So my big question is here, as everybody says that humans evolved from monkeys, what did cows evolve from then? Ox, which makes sense. No, but what was yeah. before the ox then? Dinosaur. Dinosaur. Dinosaur well, from <laughs> Tyran. So from Stegosaurus <laughs> to ox. To our to Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> okay, so yeah, and just to give this some credibility, um, the National Museum of Natural History in France, the University of Mainz in Germany, and the UCL and the UK excavated bones of domestic cattle on multiple sites in Iran and they compared those to modern cows. So it gives us some credibility. A lot of you know, if if they're talking people from France, Germany, and the UK, obviously. They know their shit. So while we're on the topic, what's your guys' favorite Jurassic Park movie? <laughs> All right, we're talking about it. It's going to be Jurassic Park. <laughs> All right, moving on. The team... You better cut this out. <laughs> All right, the team found... Let the differences that show up between the two populations could have arisen, it, arisen if a relatively small number of animals, approx approximately 80, have been domesticated from non-extinct species of wild ox known as oryx. Oryx? Yeah, I think. Oryx. Yeah. Oryx. Oryx. All right. So here's our question for this topic. We like to end off each topic with a question, all right? All right. And then you're going to be the first one to answer. Oh, boy. Since cows started in the Middle East, should have Jesus rode in on a cow rather than a donkey? No, because well, if it was a hurtful, that bitch would have prolapsed and died. Yes. Yes. At least a donkey to actually get Jesus there. We wouldn't have made it very far. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus made a good choice with the donkey. Yeah. All right. Yeah, smart guy. Well, and if we're talking here, I mean, like, I think the donkey's a little bit more receptive and submissive than a, a Hereford would have been. Like, a Hereford would have just, like, fucking fuck assholes, though, too. Yeah. Well. yeah. Like, even uh, name you any. Say the name, same for your name any, That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Name I, any kind of cattle. Like, a donkey would be way more receptive than them. Well, yeah. Yeah, they're basically kind of point. So I guess if we we're gonna say which is the best kind of cattle that Jesus could have rode on, Ooh. it's just the most tame, tame modern for, breeds. Who do we think is the most tame? Like for being like nice and leadable and yeah, getting ride right on almost. I mean, Jesus, he has his. I'd say power. bushwhacker. Bushwhacker. <laughs> no, there's no way. Um, I'm gonna go on my limb here, and I'm gonna say a whole steam that's been milked and it's on its tenth lactation. That bitch rated that. That shit is tame as. Yeah, she's, she's gone. <laughs> that bitch about to die. <laughs> He's about to die. It's ready for a walk to Jerusalem. <laughs> I went to Bethlehem. I know. So the Christian man, he just said that Jesus walked to fucking Bethlehem. I was thinking about before his, he got I was crucified. Thinking about his mother Mary. David, 
you know what, Devin? I hope your parents listen to this episode so they understand Dude, how much of a disappointment you are. <laughs> Devin, I will admit, that was a little embarrassing. That was funny. That was a good one. You know what? I'm sorry. <laughs> Next topic, all right. Holy fuck. Let's talk about the lineage of domestic cow here coming up here. Okay. For a lot of people that are in the industry, they might know this because but for the non-industry people, grain farmers, either new to egg, whatever, yep. there's technically two major lineages with cattle. Yep. Um, so the of course the Aurox, which was the wild large wild bovines found throughout Europe and Asia as well as North Africa, became extinct in 1627. Mm-hmm. But they developed in these two different but from evolution, whatever you want to call it, yep. they developed into these two subspecies, the Bos Taras, which is the English breeds, and the Bos Indicus, which is the Zebu breeds, or as, as nowadays called. So, for example, Boss Taras breeds are Angus, Hereford, Shorthorns, and Longhorns. Okay, Devin, I got a question for you here. Okay. So, <laughs> everybody knows about uh, Pangea, right? Isn't that what it's called? Yeah, that's what it was called. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. so my question is we have these English and we have these like American breeds, you know, the English and the Brahmas. I'd say South America. South America. South America, whatever. Oh, so geez. do we yeah. think what happened was there was these different breeds or there was these, there was cattle. They were all the same. And then Pangea split. And then if people don't know what Pangea is, it's when all of the continents were one and then they, they split apart. Uh, do we think that they was all the same breed and then they split apart and then they developed from there and they evolved from there and then they became different kind of animals because of their different locations on the earth. So based on this paper, Mason, I want to to burst your bubble, but the main lineages of both breeds died in the last cow was in 1627. (laughs) (laughs) You should read the paper. This way, but it's the most we can. I wasn't reading. I wasn't listening. Smacking guys at home. I was just raising the fucking question. Okay? No, that's what. We love doing. Uh oh. Nothing. We love doing on this podcast. It's bringing up Pangea. So I saw an opportunity and I was talking. Say, I'm sorry. It's like the dinosaur. They died like, like a million years. Yeah, sorry. My bad. All right. Sorry. All right, sorry all for right, all, all the right. listeners. That was my bad. All right. That's a tough one. All right, All right, so continue, Dev. <laughs> so, like I said, Boss Taurus breeds were, of course, like yeah. breeds you can find in North America Angus, Hereford, Johorn, and Longhorn. Uh, but, however, Boss Indicus breeds are considered like the Brahma breeds. So, the Brahman, the Gudhali, the Rath, and the Motu. Okay, what are those other three? I don't hear about those very often. I think those sound uh like east indian so i wouldn't be surprised if they come from that central asia region or again south america as well they're probably in africa too probably in africa probably well. down there um they just sort of cattle that's surviving hot climate hot climates so, so i have, I have a quick question. question no i have a quick question for you like when we talk about like these these uh post taurus breeds uh you hear Boss about the <laughs> Uh, Bros Indicus, yeah, sorry, I was reading the wrong line. Um, <laughs> like, you always hear about the Brahmas, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So out of that specific, of oh, those specific breeds, are the only ones that are really prevalent in the United States or even Canada, but I would imagine more the United States, is the Brahmas? Because I don't really hear about those other ones that much. Like, do you really uh, you'll have to do your own research. <laughs> How about you? you- it's a salesman. How about you? <laughs> How about this? How about this, Devin? Uh, I'll read the next part and you do a quick <laughs> Google search. All right. Okay, where did you leave off? <laughs> Bucking bird breeds. Okay. Yeah, sure All right. All right, folks. All right. Bucking bull breeds. 
So what mixes do you think they are? Oh, they are both some Jersey man. Because they are both, they are a bit of both. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fucks from the Jersey and fucking No, but they got dude, dude, you so know what I mean they are. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Jersey yeah. Bowl, like yeah. nothing beats Jersey Bowl. Bro. Yeah, like, they'll take you out, dude. You, I would put a Jersey in a bucking bowl, man. That thing would be mean as shit. I think you can make anything into a bucking bowl if it's got the heart and the will. It'll do it. All right, that's a good question then. Like. What really goes into making good bucking bowl? I know we're not, and none of us are bucking bowl as experts by any means, but if you were to craft the perfect bucking bowl, what would be the ingredients? I think it's like anything, making a good either breeding animal or milking animal. Genetics plays a big toll in it. Okay. I think that's that's a strong one. But then you hear like stories like um, this one girl we curl, or this one guy we curl with. He used to have bucking bulls, and he said they were just at a, an auction, and the Solaire bull came in, and he didn't really pass the semen test, and the guy was just going to can him. So Jim bought him and said, oh, well, let's buck him and see how he does. And he said that was the best bull he had. No, no shit, just like man. a cannibal at the auction market. I mean, so I'm like, just kind of crazy. I think that's maybe like a one in, you know, one in 10,000. Yeah, it's got to be. I think. Like it's genetics or anything else that well, make them. That's what I was gonna say. Like I feel like it's one of those things where genetics plays a huge role. So you you only see things like that, you know, once in a million. Right? Yeah, not but, very um, often. But there's so cool stories to hear. Yeah, but if you think about most bucking bulls, you see like what do you what are the colors that are most prevalent? Do you figure? Yeah, I think colors really play. I think just bucking bulls in general. You got your base. And based in this too, this will I went off Wikipedia. I hate using Wikipedia, but this is what Wikipedia said. In the end, a bucking bull is a Brahma with whatever breed you want. Right. Basically. So the, the Brahmas are touted as being it's the like fifty percent Brahma and then whatever else you want. Well look at like a bull like Bodacious. He was I think he had Brahma in him, but then he had a lot of Charlie in him too. Yeah, exactly. So so, question then. It's just um, what you're looking for. Are you looking for size? Are you looking for, like, I know for a fact, and correct me if I'm wrong, the short horn, for example, they got a little bit shorter stature. So, do you want a shorter bull or a shorter yeah. bull type? No, they Yeah, exactly. Something like yeah. that. It's yeah. all about, as a bull, bucking bull breeder, what do you want? Then you throw in, you take your Brahma, and then you throw in your secondary on top yeah. of that. Well, maybe yeah. we should get CJ in. TT bucking bulls back on and ask them this. But uh my question is you said that most bulls are 50% Brahmas. According to Wikipedia. According, according, to, Wikipedia. according to Wikipedia. Why do you guys think they're not just hundred percent Brahma? If that's the prevalent breed that's making them good bucking too skinny. bulls. Or maybe they don't have the athletic ability as much. Probably too skinny. Yeah. They're a really skinny breed. Okay. So so you think sure, you should ask your DT back and little guys here. They think I think that'd be a great question for them. Yeah. I think we did ask them about genetics, but maybe we gotta get a guy from down. I'd have to re-listen to that episode. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I, I, think, I can't even remember. It's like anything. It you know, you can get a good animal at a squat. So yeah, exactly. Holsteins are the rankest, man. Oh, Jersey kills. Jersey, yeah, Jersey. Yeah. The dairy cows that'll fuck you up the most, man. Yeah. All right. Continue Try on. AI in those motherfuckers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Too short. All right. So continue on, though. Um, cows, of course, in regards to North America, cows were brought over to North America in 1493-ish through the exploration of the New World by Christopher Columbus. First of all, they went to the Caribbean, then to Central America. Then they were brought up through cattle drives to the U.S. and Canada. If you want to learn more about this, go back to our earlier episodes on the like the history of the cowboy and learn about cattle drives and shit. So the history of the cowboy, I think, was the second episode that we've ever done. So, so it's way back. Yeah, way back there. Way back. Right to the start. Right, right to, to the start. start. I'm so, nervous to listen to those episodes because we probably sound like idiots. I mean, we still do. But like those are probably like way. Has it gotten any better? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so before we start getting into the like next little bit where it's more so uh breed specific, specific, sorry. Um top breeds. 
top two or three breeds from each person just real quick off the bat why you go you so, of here? course we're <laughs> know what your top breed is uh it's just like the breeds i really like yeah um so for this little project i did my three breeds that i looked up for charlay i mean kind of given there yeah um red pearl okay so i'm a little different and then uh limousine okay okay so yeah. that's dying the limos the limos yeah i think they're gonna make a comeback you think so i think they're gonna be like uh the show raised and people are going to see the benefits of the terminal breed mm -hmm. and i think they're going to make a comeback guys in feedlot alley type of thing that might mm -hmm. see gotcha yep. yep all right well i'm gonna go with some dairies i'm gonna go the dairy way oh yeah my top breeds are gonna be i'm gonna go with holstein first brown swiss second and then I thought, Jersey, we, were, I Jersey, thought we were only Jersey. doing two, but okay. Yeah, but then we'll top three, three is always something. But <laughs> yeah, it always just makes more yeah. sense. Yeah. And then, Why don't you do a Mount Rushmore? Do your top four. I'm doing <laughs> Jersey and Ashire, though, tied for third, just because each of them are kind of, they have their own traits that I like and don't like, but they're kind of even. Right. Okay, so Devin kind of stole my one because I was going to stick on the dairy route there. Um, I was going to go with Holstein, but since I guess I can't take that, um, I'll take Black Angus. I think it's just the classic. It's the, uh, when you're thinking about sports, it's like the fundamental, right? You know, you're talking about your Tim Duncan right there when you're thinking about the Black Angus. You know, it just has all your traits. It's pretty simple, pretty basic, but it gets the job done. Right. Right. Yep. So that's what I'm thinking about when I'm thinking about Black Angus there. Um, and then my number two, um, you guys have kind of stated a lot of the good ones, so I'm gonna kind of have to go a little out of the box here. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a variation on the wagyu. I'm gonna go with snow beef. Oh, this up. Go with snow beef. Yeah, I was <laughs> between snow beef and wangus, but you know, wagyu it's playing more of its part here in North America. It's coming more in the up and up, especially for the guys who are doing farm to fork. Because they're trying to yeah. make a name for themselves and trying to, I mean, it, it it just, if you go to a restaurant and you say, hey, I have a, a variation of Wang, a Wagyu, people are going to be like, fuck yeah, mm -hmm. get in our restaurant. Yep. Shout out to Weiss's, one yeah. of our earlier interviews, who have the Wangus operation down in seven persons. Um, like, I mean, we got to come up with it, Wyatt. I know you got your Charlay's. We gotta we gotta start the first ever Charlay Wagyu breed. And we know beef. <laughs> well, I mean that's already been taken. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh shoot. We Ross got beef. Ross you to beef, Ross, man. Ross yeah. beef sounds pretty good because I mean it's all white, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what the variation of Charlay and Wagyu would look like, but yeah. well, that'd be interesting. Fatty Sucker. motherfucker. Yeah. Frost beef. Yeah. Frost beef. You'll yeah. have to try it, man. Yes. Have to give her a whirl. Get a couple there straws, you know. man. You know how to AI? Of course. There you go, man. Yeah. What's yeah, stopping yeah. you then? Because I'm trying to sell bulls, not <laughs> beef. beef. <laughs> hey, frost beef is where you get the money maker is way. I don't know. Maybe we gotta try it first and see yeah, how it goes. Yeah. 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 All right. yeah. All right, let's get into the breeds here. Let's start right, off with the classic, as Mason said, the black. The fundamentals. Is. We got the Tim Duncan coming up here. The Tim Duncan. Timmy Duncan. Tim five, five championships, San Antonio All Star. Classic man. He didn't. He wasn't a showboater. He went out. He got the job done. He was just a hard working he individual. He good. Yes. Yeah. He did it good. He did it well. And he won championships. Tim Duncan, Black Angus. Go deaf. <laughs> All right. Wow. Well. We got the Black Angus, all right? This is a classic breed across the world, thanks, to, I personally think, into their association and their marketing and branding. Mm -hmm. they did yeah, they did a job. very good job. All right, so they first originated in northeastern Scotland. Its ancestry is a bit obscured, though, because through the breeds appear closely related to the curly-coated Galloway and sometimes called the oldest breed in Britain. Um, of course, the, color, the characteristics, the main characteristic is their black color, um, pulled head, compact and low set body, fine quality of flesh, and high dressing percentage. Now, of course, when you talk about black Angus, you can't forget about their counterpart, counter partner, 
That's a tough word. The Red Angus. The Red Angus. So how did the Reds develop, you might ask? It yeah, makes it tough. Just kept breeding it out. Uh, ba- based, yeah. So we're, <laughs> we're just going to go with that. I don't really want an explanation, but you know what? That's a lot better than what I'm oh, so. Gavin, go. You did the research, man. Go. Yeah, go ahead. I just... All right. Well, they come from the same line as blacks. Mm. Just a bit of diff- some different breeding and some different the- color. Apparently, yeah. they act a little different. However, the first Aberdeen Angus herd book was created in 1862 in Scotland. Although black was a predominant color, reds were registered without discrimination. Ooh. Shout out to that. So I've always been told that the reds have different mannerisms than the blacks. Or is that true? Technically, based on what they're taught in school, reds are how are considered a maternal breed and blacks are pater- are cons- considered a uh, the, the, the duel. Yeah, don't they say that the blacks breed bigger calves, but the reds are better mothers? I don't know. That's the Angus lady over there. Hey, yeah. Angus lady. All right, Angus lady. I'm, can you confirm that? Screen off can screen. Can you that's true? I'd say so. Okay, she says <laughs> so. That was so awesome. that means it's awesome. true. <laughs> yeah, we have a, a generational rancher over there that just confirmed it. So that means we're, I'm right. Yeah, well. Anyways, <laughs> let's, let's continue on with the action with some information, some non opinionated Hey, do you want to make an appearance in the camera over here? Or are you too busy playing Candy Crush? Stop all this, mate. For an invite. All right, so Angus was taken to America, increasing popularity here in 1917. It was decided to assure a pure black strain. Reds and other cars were not allowed to register within the Aberdeen breed okay. in North America. This bias towards the black. Uh, I totally got some. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, this makes sense. This bias towards the black Angus inspired Calvin to believe in the qualities of the red to start selecting the best red cast from the black Angus in 1954. A new herd book and association specifically for reds was started. Red Angus would would eventually start launching its own rights. Um, again, first cattle black, and then here's just some specific dates, I guess. Um, 1873, the first Angus cow was brought to America by George Grant from Scotland in Canada. Um, the first Angus breed was, was born in 1877 in Guelph at the Experimental Farm. 1884, uh, the Angus herd registry was established. Um, 18, 1908, reds were excluded. Um, well, red males were excluded, but permitted red females. Go power, if you know what I mean. Go off queens. Go off queens. Bum, bum. And then, yeah, 1968, um, that's when all red animals were eligible for registration. So they didn't like the reds at first, eh? Nope. Not big fans of them sectors. Part tied cows, cattle. Did they figure them. they had too much color to them, or what was the issue there? I don't know. They're just the Angus people. They like. They think there's a big difference, and I mean there is a little bit, but who knows? Well, yeah, I've been told there's a difference, but and there's it sounds like it's a little significant, but it's not nothing too too crazy. Mm-hmm. But anyways, why? Let's go with one of your breeds here for the next one. Okay, here we go, the Charlotte. Of course. Let's go to the best, right? It works for a lot of people. (laughs) (laughs) Not for everybody. Don't be our people. Okay. 878. First mention of white cattle in France. Hopefully it was a Charlet. Here we go. 1922. Some Mexican guy imported some Charlays into Mexico. I don't know his name. I can say it. So, 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 Mexican some Mexican guy. <laughs> so we can look back. Now, let's talk about Canada. 1955, the Charlay banner was created and the first Charlay herd book was brought into. Um, Max and Wayne Malberg imported the first Charlay bulls into Canada. These come from the Mexican herd, and they imported them into, the, they bought some from um, what they were doing down there and then brought them up here. So, so we've only been around since 1955? In Canada. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a fairly new breed. So you got to think, 
Well, I mean, everyone, like the British breeds were coming here first, Hereford, Shorthorn, Angus. Everyone wasn't really sure about these European ones yet. So, so like, uh, if you don't mind if I ask, like, um, when they came up, was it like a big hit or was there restrictions? Like, do you know if the current cattle that you have to date, like, do you understand the li- the lineage they came from, or it's uh, it was a lot of full French when they first come over. So, um, I know people uh, the full French are known to have they're a little more bonier, um, maybe have a little more size to them compared to um, the new age Charlie. I'd say even the full French um, animals you see compared to say Canadian or American bred are a lot different. So. So the Charlotte's here are a lot different than the Charlotte's back in California. Yeah, even in yeah, even Canadian full French is a lot different. So is that like eastern versus western Charlotte? Nope. Nope. Just even Alberta. Oh, even Alberta. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just a little more bony, a little more size to them. So gotcha. And then uh, pulling up a little statistics here. Um, these carcass qualities were met in the Ken- Kansas beef packers. We did a study with Angus Charlet, Frisian Hereford, Simmental, and Limousine. Um, the Charlet won in carcass weight at 345 pounds. They also uh, took the lead in dressing percentage at 57.4. However, uh, we did lack a little bit in fat depth with the millimeters, and uh, our marbling was kind of mid range. So I think um, we're doing a great job to get the breed. To where it is and we still can work on to make it better today so one thing we always forget is that all of our listeners maybe won't understand all of this kind of stuff um so for the people who don't understand cattle that well that are potentially listening um charlet is one is the biggest breed of cattle on the planet aren't they isn't that what they say uh i'll say um, three yeah, I'd say four. top five. Yeah. Top so five. they produce some of the largest cattle out there. Frame and, size. Um, yeah, I think we need to, when we're going through these ones, maybe obviously keep those some of those stats, but also simplify them a yep. bit, right? That's fair. Because not everybody's going to know everything, right? So uh, they're good for yeah. feedlock cattle. Good for what you they make use. for a good terminal breed. Terminal. As we're trying we're trying to make them more maternal with more milk production and everything else um like kind of into a duel yeah i think so i don't think they'll ever really get to that point um i know there's a lot of breeders out there that um they're turning the charlet into more of a white angus so what is there may i ask it just to go more into that i think yeah. we talked a bit about it last time but i think so First of all, how does one make a terminal breed more maternal? And two, what's your opinion on becoming more of a white Angus? Um, so more maternal, I think that's like no milk production. You know, you can get a strain of Charlet. No one, no breeder likes to admit it, but they don't have enough milk to put in your coffee in the morning. So the only way you can obtain that is through interbreeding pretty much? Yeah, like just okay. taking bulls that have, strong milk EPDs and your cows and, and doing it that way, I think is a really great idea. Um, and I think, I think everyone like that strain that doesn't milk very good. We're getting rid of it more. We're not keeping heifers and getting rid of that. So it's, um, it's doing good on the white Angus side. I have a hard time liking it and disliking it. I really like it because we have to, everyone is calving in May. Yep. And everyone's calving on grass. Yep. Nobody wants to pull calves. I don't want to pull calves. So I like the calving ease. What I don't like is we're getting away from carcass weights and having those bigger bigger animals to bring to auction in the fall. More so focused on what the cow calf guys want rather than what the feed like on feed lot or backgrounders want in the back end. And yeah. the later end of the, the cow's life to yeah. end steers end life. Yeah. Gotcha. So it's a it's a tough compromise. Gotcha. It's hard. Yeah. No, fair enough. Should we switch it up though? Talk about dairy cows here. Yeah, sure. let's go into dairy. Yeah, right. this is all exciting. But yeah. all right, folks. This is like the first breed of cows that I ever learned. These were the ones that I were raised on. Good old Holsteins, all right. If you like your milk, if you like your butter, if you like anything related to dairy, you like Holsteins. So, Holsteins are cows are 
perhaps the most recognized breed of dairy cattle and arguably cattle in general. Most people think of the white slash black spots when thinking about cows. Now, I think that's pretty prevalent. Um, cartoons. And cartoons. I would even say nowadays, even when you're scrolling through Instagram or Tinder like Devin likes to do. Um, <laughs> Devin, you dirty dog. You dirty dog. <laughs> shut up. You're hey, the one anyways, hey, shut up, Devin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, I notice a lot of girls, they'll have these phone covers that will have the cow print on them. And even when we were at Stampede, when we were at Stampede, these girls would have these pants or these shirts, and it was all Holstein print. It was white with black spots. It was like a Dalmatian, except Holstein, obviously. Sorry. What were you saying, Dev? The funniest part was, as me and Mason would go around and you would see, oh, yeah, there's that whole steam. But the funniest part is between us two, and no one else would be able to figure this out. But you're like, oh, yeah, she's a black. Oh, yeah, there's a red over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's yeah. there like the brown while the red, and there was the blacks. And then we were just like, oh, there's a black over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some girls would have, have the brown spots, and then we'd be like, oh, there's a red effer right there. <laughs> she also looks like she's in heat. Hey, walk on, boys. Yikes, that might be yikes. Stick around. Yeah, well, I'm... Fuck, man. I mean, she was in sync. Yeah. <laughs> she had her cycle going on. What can I say, man? Gross. So, the Holstein breed is known for high milk production, but is less butterfat and protein based on percentage in the milk compared to other breeds. Now, other breeds we could talk about would be Jersey. Um, yeah, those kind of ones. Ashar, they, though, would be closest to the Holstein. Yeah, so they, they produce more butter fat, but they don't produce as much milk. The one thing that the Holstein has done very well is just producing a large volume of milk compared to other ones. And uh, I don't know if we get on in. Oh, no, right away here. Yeah. So Holstein cows originated in the Netherlands. Uh, so, you know, or Devin and I. I guess originally came from the motherland. The motherland, motherland. yeah, approximately 2,000 years ago. Uh, so, quite some time. Uh, so, two breeds of cattle, black animals from the Bata- Batavilands, I butchered that, uh, present day Germany, and white animals from the Frisians, present day Holland, were crossed to create a new breed of cattle. This crossbreeding led to high milk producing animal that was able to do so on a limited feed resources so originally this breed was known as holstein frisians but is now known simply as holsteins so i i don't i don't know if we've had this in there i don't know why they got rid of frisians there um they're probably just trying to simplify it but uh probably holstein frisians kind of sounds kind of cool but uh holstein cow were initially brought to the u.s in 1852 by a massachusetts man named winthrop Shenry sounds like a nerd. If, uh, Damn, if some really long words in this one. Yeah, it kind of sounds like a nerd to me. I don't know what you nerd. Mean. Yeah, nerd. yeah. <laughs> Winthrop, fucking dweeb. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they're milking out Texas long words. <laughs> but, but there was a growing market for milk and a need for cattle. Uh, so dairy breeders looked to Holland for animals. Uh, Janeri purchased the cows from a Dutch sailing master who had a Holstein on board to provide fresh milk to his crew during the voyage. Uh, Pressed with the cow's milk production, Janeri imported more cows in 1857, 1859, and 1861. And soon, many other breeders followed suit to establish lines of Holstein cattle in the U.S., Near the end of the 1800s, there were enough cattle and dairy farmers interested in the breed that the Holstein Friesen Association of America was was formed in 1885. So yeah, a lot of history. So they're good at milk, man. They're good at milk. I mean, I like milk. Okay, let me ask you a question. Why? Okay, 
So when you go to the grocery store, I'm in the grocery store. You're in the grocery store. You're okay. looking at the mirror. Yeah, no, it's not post-COVID. You're with the. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank God. You're Go back through it. <laughs> yeah. Stop post-COVID. Pre, pre-COVID. Okay. Yes. But you're with the old lady. Okay. Okay. Yep. You're looking there. What percentage of milk do you get? Two. Two. Yeah. So is that from for financial reasons or is that just for personal preference? I don't know. That's what mom and dad brought all the time, so it's gotta be pretty good. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. Devin, what about you? Uh two for financial if I can spurge a little bit. Three point two five for chocolate milk. Only for chocolate milk. Mm-hmm. So pretty much ever since I left for college, especially since I'm you and I start stopped living together, Dad. I know we're living back together now, which is something. Uh, it's full circle. Full circle. Just comes what goes around comes around. Yeah. Full circle. We'll have to dive into this later on the podcast because I don't know if everybody knows the whole backstory. But uh, Dev and I live together now. It's kind of, kind of crazy, but it's um. Fun. My family used to be very big into the 2%, but the reason for that was because there was six of us. There were six mm. kids, right? Six kids all together, plus two parents, plus dairy. Plus dairy. <laughs> Can't forget dairy. I'm not going to explain dairy, so everybody just take along with dairy. All right. <laughs> but anyways, because we had, uh, had so many people around the house, we would have to – we'd go through so much milk. So we went through – we just did 2% because – I mean, my my father was a farmer, dairy farmer, so I don't know if he would be able to settle for anything less than 2%. Right. But uh, he's also a Dutchman, so I don't think he could afford anything more than 2%. <laughs> so, uh, so 2% was where it was at. But, I mean, ever since I've been to college, especially after Devin and I started live, stopped living together, I've always just been you know, homo milk guy, 3.25. Um you know, eventually, maybe once I start to get a family, we might have to wean back on that a little bit. But it's just other than straight from the tank, three point two five. It's probably the best milk you can get. Really, yeah. I think so. I'm not a big milk drinker, so I honestly don't. I was from an almond. That's all right. Never seen a tit on an almond. Never. Awesome. Or a cashew, or a soybean. No. Yeah, no. Exactly. Or an oat. Or an oat. You got some tiny nipples. You know, the they, ones are they ain't got jugs on them, man. Yeah. <laughs> Not like them, Derek. Yeah. <laughs> we ain't got no... <laughs> That's a book moment right there. <laughs> I love Derek. We ain't, <laughs> we ain't got no Jessica Simpson out here. <laughs> the big old jugs. <laughs> yeah, we don't want no Riley Reed. <laughs> Dude, you got tiny titties. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's an old book right there. Oh, man. Boy, I just got exposed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways. So, what's talking about? Next, Next one, Dev. <laughs> All right. Fun facts about Holsteins. Uh, just some quick ones. Mature cow usually weighs around 1,500 pounds. It can stand up to 58 inches tall on her shoulders. It's pretty tall. There's 9 million dairy cows in the U.S., and about 90% of them are Holsteins. Um, Holstein calves, despite how skinny they, they, how skinny they come out, they can weigh up to 80 to 100 pounds. Um, again, Holstein's are cows are the top cows in milk production. The average cow produces about 25,000 pounds or about or around 2,900 gallons of milk each lactation, which is about 10 months, or milk in cycle. Each lactation cycle lasts well, again, around a year, 10 months plus two months of dry off. Yeah, so when we were talking about earlier about how this is the highest producing um, – um, you know, breed of cattle when it comes to milk. Um, that's what we're talking about right there. The uh, 2,900 gallons, like that's a jug. That like is one, one gallon is one jug. That is a significant amount of milk. milk right there. Like that is so 29. Much. Take that for example. So, what are we using in Canada then? Are we, are we exporting all this milk or are we keeping it for ourselves? That is going to be a whole nother episode, guys. Yeah. Yes. Uh, about how the dairy Canadian, or sorry, how the Canadian dairy system works. Good. Did you put this in your notes, Devin? No, but it's going to happen one day when we maybe get the Alberta milk president. Oh. 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 Little 
foreshadowing. The foreshadowing. Yeah, good. Hey, uh, how the whole story works. Stuart, we're coming for <laughs> you. <laughs> Many times, Stuart, we're not giving up. Stuart, we just interviewed the yeah, after scent. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. speaking of Holstein's and Canada, speaking of milk and Canada, Holstein's were introduced to Canada in 1881. Today, they comprise of about eight or five percent of all Canadian dairy cattle. In 2021, they comprise of 93% of the national herd. So back then, so they went from 85% to 93%. So, I mean, like, mm. when people think about the generic cattle breeds, I feel like it's a fair assumption for them to make that the the coat of the Holstein is the breed that they think about just because of how prevalent it is, right? Like, yeah. Like if well, you if I you look at these statistics thing. here, yeah. Well, it's a fashion thing, obviously. It's like at cheetah the print. end of the day. It's like print. But like if you think about it, it's 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 a very popular breed. Well, no one knows that though when they're wearing it. No. Well, obviously, but like so like how's it prevalent the, if no one knows? The stats back it up. Facts. That's yeah, what well, are you gonna tell some girl at the bar? Wow, did you know that Holsteins make up eighty five percent of the Canadian? <laughs> Devin, Devin does that. <laughs> Devin does that, and that's why he gets no pussy. <laughs> Makes. <sense. laughs> hey, okay. Here's my question about Holstein. Do you find their meat to be better? I watched. I watched. I watched a TikTok the other day, and Was this it the butcher one. Yeah. Oh, where they had top breed that they liked the most is Holstein. Yeah. I saw this one. I yeah. think I saw. I when that moment you're about to say, I thought I saw that one too. Yeah. So here's the thing about Holstein. So technically, underneath the Alberta meat class system, they're automatically a B. So like they're not A, double A. They're not A. They automatically become a B because they're Holstein. Because they're Holstein. So that's why you breed with Angus. Yeah, so then you that's why it become. No, I, I but the moment, the is. moment that you breed with Angus and it becomes black, yeah, it can be qualified for A status. Right. So the thing is that so your Holstein these Holstein steers are bringing out from the states to feed out like prices and all them do they're yeah, automatically a B technically a B based on what I have been told okay. and learned well, I about the you. system I don't, I don't know but I'm just asking about the system Holsteins are automatically a B I see okay I think that's just due to carcass size and meat however though with the marbling though technically they're a good breed to eat do you like the taste of them? I can't tell the difference. Okay, I like them. You like taste them? My yeah. my what? question is though, Holstein's I... Holstein's. I want to try out some of the snow beef because if Holstein's already have pretty decent. What the marks, fuck is snow beef? I don't know, what even is Holstein so and where you, you cross? God, what a shitty cross that must be. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Good marbling, man. The cross with Wagyu makes it so much better. I'm just curious to see, like, what like is almost too much marbling. In a sense. Yeah, that's fair. Like, that's what's what it going to do? Like, because Holstein already has pretty good marbling. They like, I'm not saying like it is technically better than Angus yeah. already off the bat. Right. But like, if you had a Wagyu in there that has continuous marbling throughout the whole ribeye and everything, like, what is this going to look like? Is this going to be white? Yep. Like you know, right? What I mean? Yeah. Like, okay, but I think of this: doesn't uh, Holstein take that much longer to feed out? Technically, yeah. Technically, if you look know, at the months, isn't it for average Angus? It's twenty-four to twenty-six. It's a certain amount of days, isn't it? Like two hundred days, and Holstein's three hundred some. Yeah, it's an extra hundred days. Or something like yeah. That. Yeah. So technically, yes. So I mean that's what makes it kind of that might be that might but, don't, it's not it's not true fact this might contribute to that B class as well too right oh because they're older they're older yeah. I mean if you uh, for like thirty dollars from Wisconsin well yeah like a, a, a Holstein, if you look at a Holstein calf compared to Hol, Holstein Angus calf yeah Holstein Angus calf right off the dairy off cloth from two hundred fifty bucks yeah. Holstein bull calf off colostrum is between fifty to hundred bucks to pay on the market. Quite a bit of difference, right there. Huge difference. Yeah. Well, that's why everybody. And that's why, it. if you listen to past episodes, they're going to that whole sex semen type of thing. Yeah. Type of thing. Yeah. And just like do more Angus. So. Yep. Fair enough. All, All right, right. Wyatt, your turn. My next one. Okay. Now this one might be a new one to a lot of people. It wasn't to me a couple of years ago. We. Uh, we got some 
second calves from these excellent people out of Rimby. And uh, so that's what they were bred to. And the lady said Red Paul. They bred all their heifers and second calves to Red Paul bulls. Okay, so before you go any further, just okay. in case any of our listeners don't understand what that means, because can you please explain polled versus unpolled? <laughs> non polled. Non polled. Oh, sorry. Um, polled. So the breed is called Red Paul. Anyway, so polled is uh, no horns. Scurred is technically horns, but it just has, or no, sorry, scurred is technically pulled, mm -hmm. but they have just little nubs that are usually just attached to the skin and not actually attached to the skull. And horned is what you see with longhorns, Herefords, a lot of the time. It's, uh, it's a full on horn attached to the skull. Awesome. Good enough? Yeah. Okay. So pulled equals no horns. There you go, folks. Yeah. Okay, so this one, Red Pole. Um, the, they are really good. We were really happy with the heifers. Um, we should have kept them as replacements. Uh, the second calves are fantastic. They milk very well. Um, these calves were crossed with a short horn, so really good milk production, quiet, um, easy to handle, easy to work with. A little uh, characteristic characteristics of the Red Pole. Like I said, easy to handle, excellent mothers. Um, they cross very well with terminal sires and well out winter, cold and wet. Um, if the, you feed them properly, and calving ease is also a strong characteristic of them. Uh, they were first introduced into Canada in 1972, so a pretty relative new breed. Um, not a whole lot of breeders within. Canada, um, there's a few in the Pinocchio region, um, so this is where these cows came out of. Mm -hmm. um, the original book was created in 1782 in Norfolk, United Kingdom. Okay. Um, so yeah, interesting breed. Um, if I were looking to uh, put a cross in to get more uh, modeling females for a commercial herd, I would look strongly towards the red pole. Yeah. So well, is that kind of what you see with like the future of this breed going on? Like just to give me I think so. And the it is like, you think this is like a dark horse breed? Like this is a breed that you can possibly start to see more and more. Through. I'd love to. I'd love to see it. Um we'll go tomorrow when we're doing the farm. Yeah. Uh, my recept cow is a red pole. So okay. when you get to have a look at her. Um Chat, uh, tune into the YouTube channel, you'll see that. Yeah. Um, so I think like I think there's more breeders going out of them within Canada, uh, which is so unfortunate. Um, I think if we had more if people could see them more out and about, um, seeing the mothering ability that they have, put a nice cross on them with like I said, like a short horn or um maybe Is even could be but I think they'd be more of a terminal kind of thing. Okay. Nice and big and get rid of them. Uh okay. Maybe even a Hereford yeah. for the temperament and the uh, mothering ability. Mm -hmm. um, and you get that nice white face on them. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, like you say, maybe a dark horse under the radar. Not a lot of people know about them. Um, so let's give them a little exposure. and, and Give uh, them a little love. Give them a little love, people. Have a look. TLC some love. And... Breeders within Alberta and Saskatchewan, Manitoba. So they're essentially what you're saying is they're very good for the maternal heads. Yeah, that's why I say mama cows. So that's why they yeah. fit perfectly with Charlotte's then. Eh? Yeah, you cross them up, sell them. Lots Perfect. of milk, ready to rock. So do the calves take on that red color then? They do. Yeah, I should take a couple of pictures of them, but there's really one beautiful heifer. She's red with a nice Brocco face on her. Just awesome. Do they quite take on the tan of the feedlots I'm looking for? Yes. Yep. So it's a, is that tan? Yeah, it comes color. back. It's yep. not the pure red. It's a tan color. Not the pure red, but if you were to breed them red pole on red pole, it's where you get that nice cherry red. Gosh. Yeah. Awesome. So go on YouTube, Devin, get put up a little picture of them when you yeah. edit it. It'll look good. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, see if I, I'll see if I can pull some. You got a picture for him? him? Yeah. Perfect. Send it to him. Yeah, well. Uh, yeah. Make sure that's up. And I think I might even have some footage from your auction when we were trying to do YouTube the first time around. 
Okay. So maybe if I could find that somewhere deep in the archives, yeah. I'll even throw that. I think I took a video of that of that one tan bull that you had. Yeah. Would he be one of those red bulls technically? He's pure red, Charlie. Pure okay, red Charlie. Quick break. Yeah. Okay, no quick break. So last time that you had <laughs> your this guy your, is quick break. What <laughs> last time you had your purebred Charlotte auction? It was where was it again? Didsbury. Didsbury. Okay. So now that we're you're living up in Wainwright. Where's your plan to do it again? Is so it be our last year in Didsbury. The so, last final okay. sale with the Reese and Reese Cow Company. Okay, so you're doing it in Didsbury. We'll give you a date. March 17th. March 17th. St. Patty's Day, brothers. Oh. Beer going to be flowing that day? After, yeah. After. Yeah. after. Yeah. Okay, so we'll give shouts out closer to that you day. Know. But, uh, so be keep your turn to our socials. We'll be, obviously, if it's on the socials, we'll be highlighting that for sure. Oh, 100%. But so then after this year, are you planning on bringing it back up north? Here? Yes, there's uh, an outfit shop in Alberta called Poplar Bluff Charlotte. They're looking for some yearlings to put in their sales. So 2024, that's 2024, the plan. It's coming up north. Hey, yeah. up this year, folks, for all our central Alberta. Come to Didsbury. Next from March 17th. 2023. You got Didsbury. You the from Didsbury. That's right. Last one. So. All details will be in our socials closer to the date. Awesome. We'll um, be, and we'll be there. Like by said, too. it'll yeah. be uh, we'll be a banger. Last one. Yeah, top of the morning to you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. Um. So our last breed that we go down here. So we talked about them earlier. Brahmas. So the Brahma breed actually originate in the USA is in the early 1800s where it was developed oh sorry can i give one little more fact about the world pool i'm sorry yeah, go for it's it. a dual purpose breed i just i'm just dual? i'm just reading it beef and milk gotcha yep so that was where your milk and quality comes from so not pure so no so it just it uh it yields 5,000 years at 4.2 percent butter fat and 3.5 percent protein so for you dairy people does that sound like pretty okay i mean it's a little more than holstein isn't it is it? I can't remember. All right. Uh, sorry. I have to text my dad. Well, we just look it up. But. Yeah. Anyways. All right. So there, of course, the brown breed originated in the USA in the early 1800s, um, where it developed from the pro progeny of four Indian Zebu breeds. Also, a little bit of English spice was involved. Some some English. Boss Taurus breeds. Ooh, okay. a little bit so, of fuck shit. A little, little bit, of, a little bit of everything. The Brahma breeds a little bit of everything. Um, there was three breeds. I the three of the four breeds I found was the Guzaret, the Nolar, and the Gur. I didn't find the fourth one. <laughs> you probably butchered all of them. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously, through the 1900s, Southern Americans would breed the Brahma and cross it with other breeds. Um, very few would actually have pure Brahma breed pure stock just because uh, if you look at a Brahma, you can obviously see like off the bat, like it doesn't have that meat carcass quality that you want, right? With beef production. Yes, but the Especially one thing you have North American North American um like the man. See the one thing I've always been told about the Brahmas and like obviously we don't have too much exposure to them being that we live up here in Canada and not down in Texas or whatever, but uh, is that they have that survivability to them, right? So, but it's cool because in school, I don't know why, if you remember this, but we were in Brazil, they're doing extensive research on how to cross a Brahma with a, with an Angus, black Angus. Brangus. 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 It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like a huge research project that's going on to make the Angus breed more tolerable to those hot, humid conditions. Yep, Texas has a lot of them. Yep, yeah. and they're they're coming up through the pipe, and I think that's going to be the new. Because the thing about Texas too is like you want to make the, the next feedlot cattle that goes into Kansas, right? Yep. So it's gotta go in the corn bag. That's going to be the next thing, right? Kansas, so, Nebraska, into yeah, there. Kansas, Nebraska, Minnesota. So. Yeah. I would say, like, yeah. Angus is going to be very pivotal in that movie. I think Angus is going to be that brewery that really a lot of Brahmas are going to be crossed with. Yep, so. They love him. Yep. Uh, answer our earlier question. I completely butchered it. Whole 3.7% butterfat. 
sorry. So I was right. Yeah, I was completely off. My bad. Um, yeah, no, some characteristics, of course, of the Brahmas. They have a large hump at the top of the sh- shoulder and neck. Uh, they vary in color from very light gray to red to almost black. But most of them are usually that light to medium gray. Um, mature bulls are often darker than cows. They have this short, thick, glossy hair that reflects much of the sun rays and the black pigment, black pigmented skin make it able to graze in the midday sun without suffering. Their horns are curved upwards and sometimes tilt to the rear pulse. Plus, they have large ears. That's the problem. So the That's one all I thing, got. I love it. Love so it. the one major thing that Devin's forgetting, and it's probably one of the best marketing things that the Brahma breed has ever experienced in their entire um, existence, is that Dwayne The Rock Johnson's tattoo of the Brahma bull skull on his arm was in fact a replica of a Brahma bull skull. Now, we talk about Angus all the time doing a good job of marketing its brand. I mean, I think Dwayne The Rock Johnson right there is probably doing 10 times as much as that just by having that shit on his arm right there. I mean, you think about him back in the day being, I don't know if it's WWF at that time, but, you know, him being in WWE, having that tattoo on his arm, Fuck, man, people are probably looking at that shit and saying, hey, give me a Brahma bull. I want to fucking have some of that meat right now. I don't think the Rock Johnson has anything to do with cow breeding. <laughs> maybe not he with the breeding. A fucking clue. Maybe not with the breeding, but maybe with the marketing. You never know. Not a fucking chance. You never know, Dev. He makes I it all. But I don't think the Brahma Association of America has given him that much. Well, yeah. that's probably because they wanted the door for it. Yeah. But you know what? Yeah. He might have been doing it willingly. That's right. He he has a big heart. man. I think you forget that. He has a big heart. I don't know. He's a big corporate guy now. (laughs) But his roots, he's a big heart. You know? Good roots. He knows what... You know what? Do you know what The Rock is cooking? It's a big old heart. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Why? Did you have a third breed you want to talk about? Or are we going to close it out here? Um, I was just going to give a, a one little shout out. Um, I know they, uh, they've had a bad rap in the past. Um, no, I, no one likes him. <laughs> they've had a bad rap in the past. But look at the Solaire breed. Solaire. Okay. I'm changing. I said limousine was my third. I'm, I'm changing the Solaire. Um, one thing I like about this. Oh, sorry. Uh, the Solaires are native to France. Uh, and they're a good choice for maternal and all that good stuff. Um, the one thing I like about Solaris is they are known to have a bigger pelvis. Okay. So you can put through. Yep. So you could put a hundred and twenty pound bull on and be fine to go. So cabin out in the wintertime. Yeah, no problems. So that's uh, that's what I wanted to give them is uh, the uh, also it's making a little comeback. I think cows can be a good cross. Um, Oh, and also, quick, what I learned: Solaires don't just come in red and black coloring; they come in white and tan. Ooh! Did you know that? For the feedlot cows, like for you're looking for a more maternal cow, it's not yeah. a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Something different. Mm-hmm. A little so, what'd you say though? I'm not like you're probably you're the expert in this situation. Right? Right. I'm an expert. I just like to talk. The, yeah, yeah, but you're an yeah. expert right now between the three. Hey, of if us. we were in yeah. Pawn Stars right now, we'd be calling you as the expert. Uh, <laughs> you're the Pawn Stars expert. Right? Yeah. So if a dude comes through, and I'm not saying every cow cap guy does this, but the guy that do when they do the pelvic measuring of their heifers, yep, and they're noticing say a two to three year trend issue where the pelvic like the pelvises are just a tad bit too small. Not big enough. Not big enough. Would you say to throw this in, or would you say to find other breeds first, then use this as a last resort? Like, is this a giraffe, like right away type of breed to use, or is this a breed that you can? I think so. I think they're getting better. I think every breed out there is, is every breeder is trying to find the best cattle, and if you can uh, find a good bull that you can cross into your top top females mm-hmm. and make top replacements, then that's what we're after. Well, and correct me if I'm wrong, but, like, 
all the guys that are out there nowadays that are doing purebred operations, the reason they're doing purebreds is because they're trying to make the most out of the specific characteristics that that one breed has over the other ones, right? Yep. So, like you're just saying, like if the pelvic measurements are one thing you're really looking for, you could probably find a purebred guy that has cattle that you could, or a bull or something that you could breed to that would have those characteristics that would really be beneficial to your herd. Yeah, even uh, take a little page of the dairy book, find some sex female semen, put it in your top 15 cows, Mm -hmm. compare them, say you you breed your top 15 cows, or top 30 cows, Solaire, top 30 cows, Angus, Simitol, something else, anything else, and then just compare. Well, and And if you don't see a major difference, then just keep on your program. But if you do see something, then maybe it's time to consider it. Top 30 to top 50 to top 100. Yeah. Whatever the rest of the breed type thing. Yep. Well, and I guess that's our argument right there for all the people out there that think that purebreds are stupid. Is that, hey, you got all these characters? (laughs) Hey, I. I see that shit on TikTok every oh, now and then. People are like, uh, you break out are fucking stupid. So, and you know about that one. It's right. We just There's keep killing cattle people out there. And everyone people thinks that so, right? Differently. And you know, people that have their own opinion. Yeah. That's okay. That's good. And that's how the industry runs. Uh, that's all. Yeah, yeah, that's what keeps us going. Yeah, I bet you there wouldn't be an industry. Yeah, that's so right. exactly yeah. right. We need to have competition. Okay, so perfect. This this was an op- awesome episode. Um, we only covered a certain amount of the breeds. We could probably do this like four more times at least. <laughs> well, it's, really like it's, more. it's currently right now. It's two a.m. Come back It's getting late, folks. Um, Please um, time. We will admit, though, this, this was an awesome episode. Um, Thank you, again, Wyatt. Well, yeah, we, we gotta get more stories. We, next time. Yeah, so I agree. Stay tuned I will, for why. Yeah, but... yeah, stay tuned for why. Because I don't know if y'all noticed, probably most of y'all did, but if I was to recall, I think probably 50% of this episode was all just our intro shit. <laughs> yeah. So that goes to show that we could talk about random shit for a while. A lot of so, shit that's probably a little not agriculturally based, but fucking funny. That's it? right. So that's where um, we'll get the old TikTok and YouTube rolling with some interviews at, yes. at Ben's and Sandra Mock Wedding. That's and, right. That's what I'm saying. A while, we'll be back. Yeah, yes, we'll, we'll, be, we'll, we'll be back. back. Um, Maybe not necessarily interviews on uh on Friday, agri- agriculture on stuff. Saint Patrick's, on St. Patrick's Day when it pulls up. We won't necessarily put a microphone in his face then. Yeah. Because I've seen Wyatt before on auction day. It's not pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stress. He's not fucking yeah, he's stress stressing his head out. He's, just, he's like you know on a regular day. Pit sweat and everything going. Like, oh, yeah. Please motherfuckers are sad. <laughs> But you yeah, know what? No, we'll let him be. He will be a guest interviewer. Yeah, yes. we'll get it done. On and like I was just trying to get to, like we were doing the history of cattle in this episode. We only covered a fraction of how many cattle are actually out there. Right. Um, we have obviously opportunity to expand this to several episodes. So, um, I would say probably expect that in the future. Obviously, 20, once a year, kind of thing. Oh, once, once a year, a year but yeah. we'll have you on for different shit. That's right. We'll yeah, we 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 got to get you on for that. We'll figure it out. Shit, so, yeah, expect the uh, the whole history of the cow thing going forward. Um, we'll probably have more stuff going on every year about that. But uh, don't forget Wyatt because he'll be around. Don't worry about. We'll be here. Wyatt will be around. Well, should we sign off? We should sign off. Thanks for listening, folks. Um, say thank you to Wyatt. Thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for having me. It's always a blast. Yeah, no, it it was it was fucking fun, man. So thanks for coming on, and uh, thanks for everybody for listening. In total socials, including YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram and TikTok. That's right. We're everywhere now. That's right. Have a good night, folks. Thanks for listening. Recording right now. You know how to do cursive. I do know how to do cursive. What? Did you learn that in elementary school? Yeah. And like, wait, what grade? Grade two. Like it, when I was in the home.
so great. Oh. Two through five, they did it. And then once I went to the city, they stopped doing cursive. Yeah. Like we used to have to write papers in the home on in cursive. Oh shit, eh? I remember when I was in grade one and two, we were we had like a cursive writing class, but and then in grade three, I think we had that class like once or twice. But yeah, they kind of canned it once I got to grade three. Yeah, and, like uh, I don't remember the exact grades, but I remember doing it. And there's times where if I'm rushing. I will integrate standard writing classes with cursive. <laughs> so this is why I, it's hard to see our sticky note yeah. here, but interview is messed up like that. Yeah. When I start to rush, then I just integrate. So then it just all turns into nonsense pretty much. Yeah. It's even, just, even look at this, like the N and yeah. the on banter. It's just, so, it's just unreadable. It turns into a different language at that so point. If anyone it's, has, like you're, it's like you're like writing on Mandarin or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, do you think, no, because I the only thing I know how to do cursive is my name, right? I just do my signature and I have to use it quite a lot for work. Yeah. But um, do you think that kids should have to still learn how to write cursive nowadays? Or do you think that's a thing of the past? It's really doesn't serve a purpose anymore. I think that it's not necessarily handwriting, but typing has overtaken the writing. Yeah. Like no one writes. It. Yeah. It's like, unless you're at probably some high ass level of learning or writing stuff, but no one really writes anything anymore. So it's, I think it's more so perfecting standard writing classes and learning how to type. Maybe. Yeah. Because I, it's a pet peeve to me sometimes when guys don't know how to type, and it's just like. Do I know oh, how to type? Oh, oh, I haven't watched that. Okay, I probably don't know how to type. Yeah. Well. Do you do like the really fancy way? Well, I, it gets to find really not to look. Well, yeah, I got muscle memory, but it's like I'm doing it my own way. Yeah. I don't think I actually do it properly. Well, back in elementary grade five. My grade five teacher, when we ever we had like typing class once a week, fifteen or twice a week, whatever. We uh, if we do all the like those like games, or whatever those typing games. But yeah, was you, it like the 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 aliens on the spaceship or whatever? Yeah, was that yeah, like that? yeah, we did. I remember we had that yeah, in elementary but school. She would watch it like a hawk. Really? Like, she would watch us like a hawk. She had like the strap. Every time you messed up a <laughs> finger, you got whapped on the finger. No, no, no. What you did is, well, I'll preface this just because if you know my grade five teacher, which probably none of you do, but <laughs> this is starting to sound bad, but it's really not. Um, she'd watch, and if she watched your eyes move towards the keyboard, you would take clean underwear, preface that, clean underwear, mm -hmm. like man's underwear, stick them over your keyboard, and you'd stick your hands to the leg, like to the leg hole, and then you have to type. You sure they were clean? I really hope so. Yeah. I hope they were clean. I'm pretty sure they were clean, or else she wouldn't have a job. Does she still have a job? Uh, I don't know if she still has mm. Okay. Yeah. I will be completely honest. Um, I was kind of one of those guys who preferred to write over type. Yeah. I, I remember I, there I were times type. in like social class when we'd have to write an essay and like everyone would be in the computer lab and I'd just be in the class. I like I like putting ink on paper, man. Mm -hmm. You do have good handwriting, so I mean it works. But for me and my handwriting. Yeah, you're better off just typing. Yeah, I'm better off just typing. <laughs> um, but uh, cursive, bring it back. Yes or no? No. Okay. But anyways, it's, that, that was, shit's hard to read as well. Yeah, it is, especially if it's like all my. Yeah. Are you done with the cursive stuff? Yeah, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> and that was our uh, self research episode. Of course, our special guest Wyatt Glover. Yeah, thanks again, Wyatt. Thanks again to Wyatt, and also thanks to Wyatt and Jenna for helping yes. us for the night and giving us a farm tour. Farm tour is on YouTube. Yeah, check it out, folks. Check it out. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, Dev did a really good job of editing it, so check it out. Mm -hmm. Wasn't bad for my first one. Oh, dude, it was wicked. I thought and, you did a great job. Yeah. Well, be better. I think I'll have more like special effects and stuff in the future. But yeah. for the first one, it was pretty good. Yeah, so. quick tire pump. Gotta give you your flowers, man. Yeah, yeah. Out of the park. All right, yeah. All right. Let's hop into the next segment, though, the okay. market update. Okay, let's hop in. Welcome to this week's cattle and crop market update as of Friday, January 13th, with your hosts, Ian Manbridge and Thad Thunder. Oh, it's been a while, so let's start with what happened in the crop futures market this past week with Thad. Thank you, Ian. All right, let's see what's been happening in the crop futures market. Wheat trading seems to be a little bit down from the Christmas break. Speaking of which, happy belated Merry Christmas happy to belated. everybody. Mm -hmm. First reported here, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Um, and a Happy New Year, obviously. Mm -hmm. 
With Chicago closing in at 743 a bushel for the wheat, Minnesota was down to 912 a bushel, and Kansas was at 840 a bushel. Also, canola would see a small slump with markets closing at 840 a metric ton. Finally, corn and soybeans would be close at 675 a bushel and 1527 a bushel, respectively. Thank you, Ian. What are prices looking like at the local level? Well, for feed, wheat was around 355 a metric ton, and barley was at 370 a metric ton. Peas would be a little lower after the break, sitting at 1330 a bushel. Flax would be at 637 a metric ton. Canola would be at 837 a metric ton, and Durham would finish the week at around 493 a bushel. Good luck to all of our NFL athletes this upcoming weekend in the playoffs. Go Bengals! Yeah, go Bengals. <laughs> Thank you, Thad, though. Feels good to be back, eh? Oh, yeah. Glad to be back. Now, what happened in the cattle markets? These markets were closed the week at a buck fifty-seven per pound for live cattle and a buck eighty-one per pound for feeders. At the local markets, seven to nine hundred pound steers would sell this week with about an average of two buck forty per pound. And the five hundred seven hundred pound steers would be between two bucks sixty and three buck fifteen per pound. Heifers would be between two bucks and two bucks sixty per pound as well. Finally, the lambs would sell for 226 to 250 bucks per hundred weight for market animals and 270 dollars uh, per hundred weight, up to 400 dollars per hundred weight for feeders. Thank you, Ian. Now, where can the people here see their cattle and crop market updates? Of course. Listen on any podcast platform and watch on our YouTube channel. Awesome. Tune in to see what happens next week. And now is this week's market update with your hosts, Ian Mansbridge and Thad Thunder. Thanks, Ian. Um, <laughs> I guess since this episode's full of practices, um, the reason for the dates being a week or two behind is because we get all of our information from the Alberta government. They come out with a weekly crop and cattle market report, and we kind of just put a voice to that. So it's a quick preface. If you want current market updates, either talk to your local elevators or buyers or markets, or like look at their websites and stuff like that, or every Friday, the Alberta government comes out with a uh, general report. Okay. So cool. for anybody that's wondering. Nice. But we all come to everyone else's favorite segment. Is it everybody else's favorite? I think it's a good segment, you know? I do too. I think it's fun. All right. We're going to hop into our, our wild and wacky world. We're going to do two to three headlines a piece. Okay. I'm looking at one right now. All right. Australian woman breaks archery world record using her feet. Wait. So she breaks like the regular archery world, archery world record or does yeah. she break like the feet? one? I'm assuming it's the feet one. But look at this picture, man. So she's doing a handstand. And that is insane, that yeah. flexibility. So I'm going to try to describe to you guys. She's doing a handstand, and she has the legs, like, coming over her head. Mm -hmm. Like, or she's pretty much has their ass touching the back of her head. Mm -hmm. And she has the arrow in her hand. And, and okay, everyone so, that's trying to picture that, don't worry. I'll just snip it and throw it in. <laughs> okay, that. perfect. So if you actually want to see it, you gotta look, you watch the okay so much. she used her feet to shoot an arrow 59 feet and 11 inches into a target for the record uh shannon jones said she practiced foot archery for six years before deciding to take on the world record for the farthest shot um let's see here um the previous record stood at 40 feet so i'm assuming this is just for feet just feet of archery right 40 feet so she went she did 59 11 inches so she smashed that world record mm -hmm. she smashed it you know she usually could have just done 50 feet before. yeah probably you know, six months. yeah well she was yeah she's a baller man she's a baller man. yeah what what them feet do she she could be signed them premium yeah dude feet pick with that archery. oh you fucking kidding me man she'd, she'd make a killing she'd make a million on feet finder oh yeah dude all right i got one right now Ohio Chihuahua named oldest dog living by Guinness World Records. What? How old? So take a guess. Yeah, I've heard of dogs before that have made it like close to like 20 years. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say like 25 years. A little less than that. Okay. 23 years old. 
23 years and 43 days. So what's that in dog years? Well, what's 23 times 7? Is it times 7 or is it times 4? I thought it was times 7. Yeah, you're probably right. 23 times 7. 161. Damn. Damn, that's one old dog. Lived a good life. And you know what? It's crazy, too. That's a, it was like a chihuahua because usually like the small dogs are the ones that die quick. So that's what I was just going to ask you. Are, are the little shit rats the ones that die earlier? Or do they usually live longer? I thought usually it's the little ones that die quick. I mean, if you think about it in comparing to humans, mm -hmm. the humans that are like seven feet tall are more likely to die earlier than the smaller ones. True. You know, shout out short kings. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> but. So would it be the same for dogs? Like if you're smaller, there's less things to go wrong, wouldn't there be? Yes and no, because some of the smaller dogs are like kind of like some of those like purebred ones. Mm. So then they have genetic issues. You know what I mean? So you're saying that chihuahua that's in that it's one? It's probably, probably like not a pure chihuahua. Oh, mix yeah. of stuff. But probably a street so dog. So based on the veterinarian, it, they determined that the canine's likely birthday was November 10th, 1999. That was before we 1999? were 1999? Before we were even born. Jeez. That's, that's one crazy. old dog. But so shout out to this dog. What's the dog's um, name? Spike. Spike. Yeah. That's actually that's a classic dog name. That's a good dog. Dude, name. if we're talking about like solid dog names, Spike is up there. Mm -hmm. Um, what are some other good dog names? That you just think of when you think of you know dogs. We're actually we're dog sitting two dogs right now, and I'll yeah. give it out to the owners, um, Laura Dean and Galvin. But uh, I really like the name Trigger. Trigger is a good name. I, I know like, a lot. I, of, I like the name. Trigger. I've met a lot of people before who, who's who's named their dog Trigger though. So it's uh, I don't know how original it is anymore. But mm -hmm. um, now, how do you feel about giving dogs like human names? <laughs> uh like Bob and stuff. Like yeah, I'll be Peter. like, oh, here's my dog Gregory. Uh, I think it depends on the human name, and also depends on like the dog. Okay. What if it like like Doug? If, I like Doug. If my, like Bruce. Yeah, yeah if Bruce it's like a big okay. like like a big pit bull, and you name him Bruce. Brucey. Like, like Bruce, like, Brucey, like yeah. the bigger pet, like a thicker dog. Yeah. Bruce. Bruce. It's like Bruce. I like the name Doug. Doug. Dog. Like, yeah, hey, what's dog. going on, Doug? What's up, Doug? Doug, my man. <laughs> Doug. All right. What you about like Rufus? Oh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. There's got to be like some super popular dog names that we're just not thinking of. Right yeah, now. probably. Like Baxter. Yeah. What's uh? What's the next headline you got there? So uh, I got one. If you don't you got one. Yeah, do yours. All right. This is gonna be like a like. Like, a, how you, how do you, how would you feel if you're in this match? Okay. Right. So, Detroit teenager wins six hundred and thirteen thousand dollar jackpot. He's a teenager. Yeah. So with, he couldn't catch. But, but with ticket gifted from a friend. Okay, but he wouldn't be like. Was he able to cash out then, or was he not old enough to cash it? So, um, so it looks like the teenager when they say. Teen, I think it would, It sounds like uh, the teenager was nineteen. Oh, okay. So he was still legal to be able to claim that money. Mm hmm. But I mean, like, think about that though for a second. You like, like, scratch tickets and stuff like that are like a common gift, right? Mm hmm. Like, how would you feel though? Like, you were like, oh, I just gifted. Like, yeah, I just tough. gifted someone that much amount of money. Like, that's crazy. Like, like that could have been me. So obviously, it's like, okay, well, I. I... Because you did, you did a good job by giving the gift. I think the real test of character in this case is what do you do as the winner? If you're the friend that received the gift, do you give I a think, portion? I would say you have to give a portion of the money to. The person. I think it needs to be at least a certain amount. I'm not saying it has to be a certain percentage, but like, so how much was that one? Six hundred thousand or something like yeah, that. Yeah, six hundred thirteen thousand. Yeah, so you got to give the guy, and this is probably even a little lower on the spectrum, but you got to give the guy probably at least ten grand. I was thinking closer to fifty between fifty and hundred. Yeah, that's like, not give him like the chance of like, like to go buy a car or pay off yeah, some like short yeah. term loan, like say a student loan, pay off some student. Yeah, loan. you're right. Yeah, I guess for that fifty, probably Especially around fifty. Especially if it's like a friend good. where like it's like a good like it was a good ten dollar gift. It depends on. I'm not I guess it also anything. depends how good a friend you guys are. Well, maybe the situation. I'll, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, is a friend loaded? I'm just giving out lottery tickets left, right, and center. Then does it really deserve a? 
Does it say if it was just like a one dollar scratch ticket? Because I doubt if the kid was loaded, he'd be giving up like, like one dollar scratch ticket to his friends. It was a lucky sevens fast money jackpot. Okay. So I did not know that's an obviously an American thing. Um, yeah, I just don't know. So okay, but all right, I wish I, think I we wish came to consensus. Seems like the friend should get some portion yes. of that money. All I hear is some kid living my dream. Yeah, winning the lottery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, imagine how sick that would be. Okay, I got one here. Message and bottle travels from Canada to Ireland in eighteen months. Oh, that actually seems faster than I figured it would have. Did, I wonder if they had a GPS tracker in this thing. Yet. Well, like, also, like, did the note get preserved? Like, what's happening? Yeah. Like, what's in the bottle? So, message in the bottle, tossed in the ocean. Um, turn up an iron team. Okay. Okay, when she so some girl was walking her dog in Ireland when she spotted it in the sand. As soon as I got to the beach, I noticed it. I had sent a message in a bottle years ago when I was a teenager with my friends, and straight away I thought this is a message in a bottle. Oh, Jesus, huh? Huh? Deja vu. So when I picked it up, there was a plastic bag inside, so I knew it must be containing the letter. So yeah. I took with so wait, the person that tossed the bottle in also the one that picked it up no way actually no i don't think so because it says you made it sound like she, she did that when she was really young okay sometimes so the note details. yeah the note inside the gray goose vodka bottle revealed it had been thrown into the water from a snow crab fishing vessel mm-hmm. off the coast of nova scotia in july of 2021 so no it wasn't here the note was signed by um some dude um Colin found the dude and messaged him on Facebook. Um Okay, so the glass bottle traveled roughly 4500 kilometers in that 18 months. Oh wow. Okay, so why the hell was this guy just littering? <laughs> <laughs> like it doesn't even seem like there was like a, a true message or anything or he was like seeking help. Like it wasn't an SOS. It <laughs> just fucking littering in the <laughs> ocean. <laughs> I guess that's one way to put it. <laughs> I mean, I don't think there's anything of any significance from the message from what I'm seeing here. Mm-hmm. So, who knows? Well, because, yeah, the guy says. What was even on the note? You think? I don't know. I don't know. It just seems like kind of like a waste of paper and a waste of a good bowl. Yeah. What type of, what, uh, what type of bottle was it, though? It said Grey Goose. Ooh. So the guy. So uh, ten bucks. Here's actually. I'm gonna make a little backstory on this right now. Ten bucks. He was drunk. He was probably drunk. Yeah. For starters. Yeah. Probably. You know what? Ocean side. Not gonna say cabin or house. It's probably like an ocean side house. Oh, I think he was on a boat, probably. Oh, or on a boat. Yeah. Maybe he's a fisherman. I think got they drunk. said he was a fisherman in the oh, article. Oh well, there you go. He's a fisherman. Got drunk with his buddies. He's like, oh, we throw a small Greg goose. Just throw a note in. See what happens. The next thing, only a few months, it ends up in Ireland. So. What if he just had like his Snapchat on there or his phone number said call me with a smiley face? Ooh. No, that's wheeling and dealing. He's, right he's got that riz. Or or <laughs> he was out he's out at he's out at sea for too long. So he was, you know, yeah, maybe in the fields. Yeah, the field. I got one final one here. I well, I said. got I got one more, yeah. What is it? Horse spotted riding in the backseat during McDonald's drive through run. Hmm. A uh, visitor to a low to a local McDonald's fast food restaurant in Australia, captured a video of an unusual sighting. Horse riding in the back seat of a drive-through. A horse riding in the back. Seat. I can't talk to that. Okay, so pretty much all that happened was the people who own this horse just put it in the back seat. Yeah, it was like a little mini pony. Okay, why the fuck does this make the news? <laughs> I don't know. This is the odd news, man. This, I mean, like, okay, how would you feel if you drove up to a drive-through and you saw a horse in the back seat? Of- of a sedan i don't know i'd be like what the fuck like i i well first of all that horse is gonna shit all over the back seat well i mean we used to like have to throw in calves in the back seat yeah, every once in a while back on the dairy but it's so. like a miniature horse this is like double the size of the calf yeah so, that's fair. yeah but and then once you take the calf to town though well then probably not <laughs> <laughs> so there you go it's yeah. a little odd. yes it's a little odd but they uh at the bottom of this article. Actually, I think this next one is a little more well, profound. At the bottom of this article, though, they said though in the original post, they said only in Australia. Oh, 
I don't think. Yeah, I don't know. We well, could, maybe. Should we do that? Should we do it this summer? Yeah, should we find a little mini pony? Let's if anyone's a put, mini pony, put it in your car, though. I don't want to have to deal with it now. No, we'll put it in your old little white car. No. <laughs> 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 All right. Last one here. Canadian man. Shout out to our Canadians. 82. Mm-hmm. So he's an old fucker. Becomes world's oldest to perform a headstand. Are you serious? Devin, can you do a headstand? No. Where do you pull it? I also can't do a headstand, I don't think. Do you think if you tried really hard, you could? I think if I tried really hard and practiced a little bit, maybe. But like, yeah, I like, think so too. What type of like world record is that? You know I what I mean? Know. Like, that's kind of like a made up. See, that's the problem with this Guinness World Record stuff is you could literally say, like, you could say anything. True. True. But then the problem is, if you say anything, and if people actually are one of those, uh, we've called them losers before in the past, people just go around trying to get Guinness World Records, they could look at that and then just break it right away as well. But Yeah. So, but, how old is this guy? 82? 82. So, the 10 thing bucks, I don't like about 85 year old sees this, he does the exact same thing with pictures of you. 85 year old? Like an, like an 85 year old. Oh, <laughs> I don't think an 85 year old is going to be able to do this. Like that. I don't know. You'd be surprised. Yeah, you know. like, a chip, a chipper young lad. Yeah, maybe he still goes out for runs every day. You know, yeah, like that. still that's has fair. that ability. So, I mean, yeah, if there's any 85 year old guys listening to this, uh, this world record is up for grabs, man. Yeah. Um, I think I don't like about headstands just to begin with is just like how the blood rushes to your head and you get like lightheaded. Yeah, you know, I'm I think the only issue though, that. I think the main, well, not the only issue, the major issue for us is we have no more core strength. Yeah, we have beer bellies. That impact, has been so completely decimated. It's pretty hard for us to do a headstand. Okay, let me finish the article here quick. So, and this guy has an unfair advantage. He's from British Columbia, mm-hmm. British Columbia man. He's been doing gymnastics since he was 15 years old. Oh shit! He's really? 82. Do the math. That's a lot of years. Yeah. You've been doing it for a long year, long time. Yeah, I'll even do the math. Okay. Okay, so 82. what's 82 minus 15? 67 years. Jeez. All right, so he said he started to dish a tradition of doing a headstand every year to celebrate his birthday about 20 years ago. So if he lives another year, and hopefully you do, uh, Bruce. Brucey. Brucey. <laughs> hopefully you make it 83. He might be breaking his own record next year. Mm-hmm. Um. Let's see what how else it says here. So, if he's able to do gymnastics for 67 years now, how long, like, what age do you think he just can? Um, if he's been doing gymnastics since he's 15, and he still has that strength, he's 82 and he gets. I'm thinking I'm gonna give him at least another like five years. Ah, maybe that's a little ambition. I'm gonna give him like Actually, another like three. That's what my I was about to say. I think eight, seven, eight. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna get into the nineties. There's no way. I think even at eighty-five, he might have to tap out. You know what? Maybe eighty-five is just a good number to tap out at. You know? yeah. so, the, not a round number, but it's a good number. Right? Well, it's a, it's, a, it's an okay number. It's not a prime number or anything, but it's okay. Yeah, but yeah. Anyways, All right. Cool. That no. was our wild and wacky world. Yeah. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed that as much as we enjoyed it. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> just fun. Just looking at the random just, yeah. like shit. Oh, literally throughout the week but yeah no um that will be the conclusion of this week's episode yeah thanks again for listening guys i know we've already said it a couple times and we've been preaching it hard so um you're probably getting annoyed listening to it but go check out the youtube go check out the uh the farm tour um we're putting all of these episodes on youtube as well like podcasts so if you're somebody who prefers to have a visual going on I mean, we're just sitting on the couch, so we're not really doing much. But if that's something that interests you, hey, knock yourself out. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, stay tuned for for future episodes, future videos. And uh, you got anything to add, Dev? Sure, check the socials, Instagram, TikTok. I did start a Facebook. Pretty cool. And then also Twitter. We're on Twitter occasionally. Yeah, I haven't been on in a while. (laughs) I I go on once or twice. Just kind of see what's up. And then also we have a few links in the description. Feel free to explore those. Uh, other than that, have a good have a good week, folks. Yep, signing off.